Okay, let's see if YouTube actually kicks off. The joys of starting something new. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, stream health green. Receiving your content. It says I'm live. Their internet can now totally see you. Oh <laughs> shit, people on the internet can see us? <gasps> I, I'm wondering how many of our YouTube people are suddenly going to be like, oh, you're broadcasting to YouTube! <laughs> I think most of them watch us on Twitch. I think most of them do, but I've wondered if, since we have so many followers on YouTube, if broadcasting to YouTube might bring in uh, some more people just to watch us, because there's a bunch of people that just don't have Twitch accounts yeah. and don't want to create one. Mm -hmm. Also, with YouTube, uh, they can watch us on their phones live, they can watch us on like Xbox and PlayStation 4 through the apps and all that. So that could be interesting. Can't they basically do that through Twitch, too? Uh, the Twitch apps apparently suck. Oh. <laughs> Which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. You know, I, I find it kind of funny because I don't understand it all that much, but there are people who watch Twitch at work. Yeah. Well, like, like, they just put it on in the background. They're not, like, watching, watching. They're just, like, listening. Well, we've had a couple of our viewers talk about that with our YouTube videos. Uh -huh. They like to just put it as background at work, and then they're like, yeah, I can hear when you guys get excited and something's really happening, and then they're like, and then I turn and watch it for a few minutes. Yeah, there was one other thing. So one of the guys, uh, one of the guys that I uh, talk with, actually, uh, there's a series that he watches on YouTube, which is just a guy walking the map in the, uh, the... Elder Scrolls games. Interesting. He just walks maps. Huh. So, like, he spent, like, 40 hours walking the map in, like, I don't know, Oblivion or something like that. Just 40 hours just walking from one side of Oblivion to the other or something like that. There's the desert bus. Yeah. <laughs> from hell. I don't know. I, I will say that, uh... That we very much love people watching us, but sometimes I don't quite get watching other people yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but then well, again, no, I mean I want, I understand watching people in some cases. It's just some of these really out there stuff. It's like wow, but like how many people did that guy who, um, uh, the one who did the FF7, leveling the 99? Oh yeah, 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 and he did it all live. Uh huh. And probably got almost all of his views on the final one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, it is. Hey, our first viewer showed up. We're still in the pre-stream. Got five more minutes before we kick off fully, and then we will be good to go. This should prove interesting. Mm hmm Don't you love going into fights blind? Oh, yeah. I love going into fights blind. I looked at some of it. <laughs> Mainly because I wanted to make sure that I had some vague idea of how the monster played, so that we weren't just like... Here, let me spend five minutes, like, staring at this card and trying to purse what it means. Yeah, really. We're probably still going to have some of that, but I at least read some of them. Yes. Ha-ha, resin dung ball. <laughs> yes. Oh, you know people are going to want to see close-ups of this thing. I'm going to have to be so careful with that. That one's a l the Those uh, eye socket thingies on his back mm -hmm. are, uh... Oh. They're... they're Tender. <laughs> Delicate. Delicate. That's another word of, way of putting it, yes. Hey, Sage. Hey, thank you very much for uh, joining. Oh, man. The, this. I'm always nervous about these new fights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not even going in on easy mode and with level no, no. one just to see what it feels like, yeah, get yeah. an idea. No, just straight up level three. Poof, all out. Yep. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to, uh, for uh, these one-off fights, we're going to show our full character layouts and everything before the fights start. Mm -hmm. And I'm also working on a way to actually uh, lay those out. And then, like, for lack of a better term, I'll take pictures and then throw them up on screen before we play. Oh, nice. So I can just uh, put them up on screen. Um, or what I'm hoping to actually do is since we're only controlling one character at a time, I'm looking to see if I can create a way to, uh, turn in, on and off our gear so that, like, when you're controlling, say you're controlling Death Star, your gear would appear over my two characters in the lower right. Yeah. I mean, I really feel like, uh, there's something here for, like, HoloLens where, like, basically having multiple streams. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it should also be interesting, uh, the VR stream we do. Mm-hmm. That could be cool. Yeah. 
Um, I'm interested to see how well that works out. Oh, just a couple more minutes and then we will be live. <laughs> Yay! Something like that. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, I actually posted this to Reddit. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Another well, chance for people to tell us how bad we are. Oh no, no, people never tell us how bad we are. I oh I can't wait till people watch our uh, new Pandemic Legacy season two video, mm -hmm. and they're like, "You did it wrong!" And we're like, "We realized that at the end of the game, we realized we were doing it totally wrong." <laughs> yes. I've got hope, honestly, that yeah. we're gonna do well on this. Yeah, because so do like I. we did. We did beat the Dragon King. Yes, we did. Like, we beat the Dragon King. Yes. Which says something. Oh, oh, you found it through Reddit. Yay, it worked! <laughs> I mean, well, thank we you for joining and hope you will follow, like, subscribe, all that good fun shtick. Mm. <laughs> we may be dirty, dirty cheaters who got here in hero mode, but you know. Hey, what can I say? I'll take dirty, dirty cheating. Yeah, we did win. <laughs> hey, and it taught us to fight harder monsters. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing I keep telling everybody is play hero mode at least once to get confidence yeah. that you can fight the harder stuff. You know, the only thing is, I you know, I really ought to go online and find some stuff. I'm interested to see whether or not some people have come up with a more coherent vision for hero mode. Yeah. Because there's a lot of events which just don't make very much sense if you're playing in hero mode. So... One more minute and we'll get going. You know, I kind of... I imagine somebody else has to have put some thought into this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we could do some variations on that that could be interesting. Yeah. Um, but I'm really looking to our, forward to our people with the flowering skull. It doesn't really make much sense. We're going to have to do some really Oh, yeah, we're going to have to tweak. It. We've got three weeks to tweak it. Yeah. So we should start talking over that on the weekend mm -hmm. and figuring out what we want to do. Hey, Heroic, thank you for joining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, we're tr I'm trying to think, like, I don't know how many, of, how his gear works with resources and what resources you can get off of him, but what I'm thinking is... What, the Flower Knight? Yeah. We ain't fighting him. Oh, we're not. No. Ooh. Basically, oh. like, the, the, if we do People of the Bloom, uh -huh. then fundamentally we we're worship. worshipping the, the, you know... Throughout most of the game, did you really fight the Dragon King? Uh -huh. oh, you the... didn't hunt him. Hey, Ties! Yeah, the bow is so broken. The yeah. bow is, like, crazy broken. Okay, well, we're good to go, so I will officially kick this off by starting our recording. And we're live! Thank you very much for joining us. This is Forged by Geeks playing Kingdom Death Monster. Last week we finished uh, People of the Stars in Hero Mode. So as we're prepping for our... Um, uh, well, yeah. Anyways. Anyways, in the meantime, uh, we're going to be doing a couple of one-off streams on Saturday. This week, we're doing a Dung Beetle Night Level 3. The following week, we're planning to do uh, the Lonely Tree Level 3. And then we haven't quite decided what we're going to do the week after that. So if anybody's got any ideas for our, our third and possibly final one-off fight, that's going to be either a Legendary or Level 3. We've heard some requests for a Legendary mob, but, we, but no like specifics where it's the cat the antelope or the uh uh phoenix so if you have any ideas at all please let us know the phoenix you oh. know well a taking these characters into the phoenix would basically be like Dead. hi guys <laughs> hi guys yes um also uh so recently we stopped streaming to mixer because we just were not getting any views there so we decided what the hell so we're now also streaming over on youtube um so if you're interested in saying hi or anything on youtube or if you're actually a follower of us there you can now watch us live on youtube um and you can even see uh we have a separate chat panel there it is uh that shows when people chat to us on youtube as well and we have both visible to us while playing so if you chat on either we can see it and then people watching on either can see what people are saying yeah. so that's pretty cool um other than that i think we're good to go but we're going to go into a little bit more detail so if you're watching this on post recording uh you and you don't care about our characters or you've already seen them or everything you can probably skip five to ten minutes ahead um and our lantern. I don't think we ever showed that. No. We've had that for months, and we've never shown it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, crit farming. No, for the 
the uh, flower night. Oh, okay. So, um, oh, and always thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Just a dollar per month helps us a lot. Uh, and we're we're moving on. So, as you can see, for new people, we've got these wonderful card overlays uh, that we use to show stuff on our streams. So, the four characters we're bringing in today. I've got Grumpy Noble. Now, these are from our People of the Stars campaign, so they look a little bit different than what you're used to. Um, I've got Unbreakable, Champion's Right, and Mighty Strike as my three fighting arts. So Champion's Right basically just allows me to get a huge accuracy increase. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't? Because look at your understanding. Oh. And it's giving <laughs> you shit. It gives for... me one. It gives me oh, one. Oh, yay. Uh, Unbreakable means... Ignore one result from a roll for severe injury. And then we've got Mighty Strike, perfect hit, plus two strength, like this character needs it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's a little bit overkill. On top of that, just to make it more overkill on strength, he's got Quixotic. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, he so needed a strength token. Yeah. Um, for those not familiar, he is a Reaper from People of the Stars. That's why he has 13 strength. Because every fight he went into, he could eat a disorder off somebody to gain a permanent plus one strength. Um, outside of that, uh, that character's pretty set. Um, he doesn't have a full armor set, but because of his ability Iridescent Hide, he's got three hookups on gear. So he's got a blue hookup, a green hookup, which went invisible because the wonders of overlays. Hi, Morph! Um, oh god, Immortal. Oh god, I love Immortal. Um, but he's got a blue set of hookups here with the Wisdom Potion specifically, which lets us always watch the top hit location. Um, the plus one luck, which I think I forgot to put on the overlay because that's me. Um, and, uh, the whisker harp, which is always good. He's stuck with the hideous disguise for extra strength. Um, and then on the bottom part, we've got an extra strength from a monster tooth necklace because why the hell not? Um, the greater gax, that's mostly to get the red hookup to give him one armor. And a feather shield, mostly because it gives him an armor to everything, because we have shield uh, mastery. Okay. Uh, do you want to show a character? Sure. So, um, this is Eridanus. He is, uh, interesting. Yes. So, he's a fist and tooth master, uh, he, which gives him increased accuracy, strength, and speed, I think? Yep. For all weapons, so we've directly put that into his primary stats. Uh, he unfortunately has a shattered jaw, which means he can't encourage. Um, and so he has several fighting arts: extra sense, which allows you to dodge twice; unbreakable, which you already see, which you already saw before; uh, and then frozen star. Frozen star is interesting because once per round, you may spend one survival to freeze a monster's brain, and they gain negative two accuracy until the end of the round. You can also kill somebody if you want to using a survival, so that's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he has a few downsides, one of which is performance anxiety, which I don't have the card for because it doesn't really matter. Essentially, it means he can't have children. Yes. <laughs> um, Actually, you know what? That may be cured if you have courage or understanding at a certain level. I can't remember. It may be, yeah. In any case, but the important ones are stage fright. Whenever he becomes doomed or gains the priority target token, he loses one survival. And binge eating. You cannot depart unless you have consumable gear in your gear grid, which I do. And you must consume if a choice to consume arises. Okay. So then for... He's, oh, and he's Way of the Rust, which means if he gets bleed tokens, then he gets additional evasion. Yeah, for every bleed token he has on him, it's plus one evasion. Unfortunately, when he got his See the Truth event, he got a Sour Death, and he's got a Shattered Jaw, which means he can't use it. Yeah, <laughs> but um, we have Fist and Tooth Mastery, so with the courtesy of Fist and Tooth Mastery, everybody, uh, that's all... That, everybody gains the specialization, which is they can stand if knocked down. Yeah, the other thing, but the reason why Sour Death kind of sucks is because it gives you a plus one strength token if you encourage yourself. Yeah, that makes sense. So his gear is a pretty standard leather set. Uh, he's only using the hazmat shield for uh, equipment. Yeah, and two then, extra to each location. And then he's hooked up with some monster grease. So that effectively gives him a two evasion. Uh, and then he also does have the power potion, which allows him to gain strength tokens, though he does, he, so he can gain three strength tokens if he consumes it, uh, but he's got a shattered jaw, which means he can't, so it's just there for the hookup. 
Okay, my next character is Chicago Bear. We had a bear named campaign, so that was exciting. Um, he's uh, got legendary lungs, which normally sounds really good until you mix it with uh, a bow mastery. You basically end up just shooting too much. Now, luckily, oh, he. Oh, come on, man. It did... Bow mastery doesn't have a negative association with it because you can elect not to re roll the misses on the bow if you don't want to. That's yes. the specialization. Yes, but legendary lungs, you can't. <laughs> yes. So he's going to be uh, shooting like a motherfucker. Um, he's got Witch, which gives him this presage ability, which is. I... With mixed with the wisdom potion on the other guy, I can basically go. I'm attacking this hit location, and I gain three insanity and ten strength on the attack. So while his accuracy is a little low, um, if he hits, he hits, and yeah. he most likely crits, which is really awesome. Um, and he got the twilight sword, yay. yay! Which just means I'm taking up a gear slot. Yeah. <laughs> now, for those unfamiliar, like Oracle's Eye and Pristine, those are all stuff from People of the Stars that just give us a little bit of extra abilities, like we get to look through the AI deck when we first build it and things like that. Okay, for his gear set, uh, pretty standard Rawhide hookup. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get in our set. We almost got an Antelope set, and then we fucked up. Yeah. Um, but he's got the Cat Cup bow. We also almost got the Arc bow, but we fucked up. Um, the Lion Knight badge, which gives him plus one accuracy, and we'll get a Tactics card. Tactics cards we first blew off, but some of those are awesome. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, like that Reviving Tactics or whatever, the one which allows you to fully heal. That's yep. amazing. Yep, and then on the bottom it's just the rest of the Rawhide and the Mandatory uh, Twilight Sword. And then your last character. Okay, my last character is Death Star. <laughs> Eridonis and Death Star were from The our, Great uh, Victor! Did he get the Killing Blow? Uh, yes, I think he did. Awesome. Okay, so Death Star is a Storm character. So, unfortunately, because we didn't carefully read what Storm meant, we know that he has at least one other mastery, I just don't know what it is. Yeah, we forgot um, it. <laughs> yeah, but he is a Sword Master and a Shield Master, so that's useful to know. Yep. Um, he has pretty decent stats, including this monster evasion of four. Um, he is a Clutch Fighter. Well, you have three or more bleeding tokens, gain plus one strength and plus one accuracy. We took that after the uh, we beat the um, the Dragon King. Yep. Uh, and then he also has Faded Blow, so uh, he can, uh, once per showdown, make his next wound attempt plus two strength and devastating one. He does not need the plus strength, though. No, we're doing pretty good on strength all around. Timeless Eye means that he has a perfect hit on a nine or a ten. He is not blind, so it does not uh, fail him. He has shallow lungs, so if he's encouraged, he if he encourages, he is knocked down. So we have to keep that in mind. But we usually don't have him encouraged, or yes. because we have no, the... he's like the only person without a shattered jaw, dude. Oh, he is good. Point. Yeah, he is also quixotic, which means I'm going to get a plus one strength token uh, at the start of the thing, and he has a weak spot of a body, but that's okay. There's your strength token. Thank you. Um, let's see what else. So he's also got the Nightmare Spurs, spend all survival to lose all strength tokens and gain that many luck tokens, which we, like, never use. No. Um, he has both Iridescent Hide and Oracle's Eye. Uh, homing Instinct, plus five to run away, so he survived a Bone Witch. He also has Sweet Death, you may surge without spending survival, but only to activate a weapon. That's really useful, because it means I can basically surge for free. Yeah. Um, so... From a... Oh, he has the most fucked up gear set. Uh, well, I mean... Well, it's, it's awesome, It's but... awesome, but yeah. So, his gear set. So, he has the beacon shield, which is a nice thing, but he also has the black sword. Yes. Which, because he's timeless eye, he gains plus one survival if he rolls a nine or a ten on any of his rolls. He has one speed base, and because he's a sword master, he gains plus one speed when attacking with a sword. Yep. So... And... He rolls five dice. Which, anybody who's played Kingdom Death this far knows that's not always a good thing. Except... Yeah. Except for the fact, this is why we gave him the blue charm. Yes. Because he's unshakable. When you draw a trap, roll 1d10 on a 6+, plus, discard the trap, and reshuffle the deck. Okay, so, he, we also, just for kicks, gave him the green charm, which is undeathable. So why can he actually activate these charms when they require five hookups? Because he has the cycloid armor. Yes, the cycloid armor set is just awesome for for stuff. So this may look kind of crazy. Um, you know, clearly I've only got, like, what, 
three hookups, according to this, except the gear set gives you prismatic. Your complete affinities and incomplete affinity halves count as all colors, which means he has a lot of affinities. Yes, he like, does. a lot. Yes. Um, so pretty much everything is hooked up properly enough that it can be used. Um, and yeah, he's just crazy. Like, the cycloid set, I... Is really it's hard to get. It's hard to get, but if you can get that whole set, that thing is awesome. Oh, it's so nice. Okay, I think we're good to head into the fight with our Dung Beetle Knight. Yeah. Now, because everybody always asks this with whenever we fight a new monster, you want a nice close-up shot of the monster. So, here's our Dung Beetle Knight. You can uh, see him all around. He's got some nice fancy wings. It's kind of interesting, because basically, like, 50% of that was you, and 50% of that was me. When yeah, you had built most of it a long time ago, and then I finished assembly today. Oh, I was so terrified that it was going to, like, break. Yeah, well, those little uh, eye stalks on the back are a little tender. No, but I mean, I was afraid oh, yeah. to lose a piece or something. Level 3 it is! We're doing level 3. And then here's the, the dung ball. It's like, I almost want to get something to load into this. No. <laughs> Except it'd be a pain to get out. Yes. But yes, this is a level 3 Dung Beetle Knight. So he is right below starvation. Before starvation. Oh shit, are you kidding me? No, it's pretty common for uh, level 3s, man. Oh really? Oh yeah. Wow, let's hope none of this moves him out. So... Well, we will still hit starvation, but he will not move off the board. So... Uh, so he's right that. there. Uh, yes, so why did you use the dung ball instead of the model? I'm working on it. Diddy. Uh, we need a uh, priority target. I don't target. think that'd no, work well. do not do that. <laughs> don't do that? Don't want me to break it suddenly? Yeah, the dung goes in that. Yes. <laughs> and or then sometimes us. Yes. Now we'll roll to see who gets monster controller. I've got a five. I have a nine, so it is going to be Eridanus. Awesome. All right, so first hunt event. Random event. Woo! Uh, 46. Now, for the main campaign, we actually had several other events that could pop in, and we went through all of them, which yeah. is kind of cool. That we did screw up with the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the Lonely Tree. Ah, uh, yeah, fair point. 46, River. The survivors come to the edge of a river of blood. Non-insane survivors <laughs> suffer one brain event damage at the site of it. Uh, the survivors must investigate in order to pick up their quarry's trail. Each survivor rolls uh, 1d10. Wait, non-insane? Non-insane. Okay, so both mine are insane. Okay. <laughs> so, Eridanus rolls. Okay. Five. Your quarry has defecated in the blood. Suffer one event damage to a random hit location from sifting through the fecal blood water too long. Yee. Yeah. That's kind of appropriate for the... Uh, for the campaign, yeah. For this particular guy. Okay, and then for Death Star. Ooh. And, oh, thank God, you successfully find the monster's trail. <gasps> so... I believe it says each survivor rolls 1d10, so I'm imagining you still have to go. Oh, so we need one person to find the trail. Yeah. Okay. But I believe you still probably have to roll. Okay, so let's do uh, Grumpy. Okay. One! You lose your balance and fall into the river of blood. Instantly, a massive parasite crams its way down your throat, savaging your insides on the way in. Suffer the broken rib severe body injury. You hope that's all the parasite does to you. Uh, so, broken rib is minus, minus one permanent speed. Oh. And gain a bleed. I don't know, man. I don't mind losing speed. This character, I do. Why? He only had two speed on his weapon, and now he only gets one. Oh, ouch. Yeah. So, that, so you had a bad day, mm -hmm. and I gain a bleed token already? Yeah. Oh, that's a great starting point. All right. And so, why is my luck a W? Because you're imagining I'm... you're going to win. <laughs> okay, roll uh, for the last character. Broken ribs, severe body injury. Oh, yay. I'm getting... You know, I swear to God, I am... I Remember am the... that if you are unbreakable, you can ignore... Oh, uh, you wait, can? No, that's... No, it requires a roll. Okay. Yep. Oh. You should have brought some dry to campus. 
If I wasn't forced to have a Twilight Sword in a hideous disguise, I probably would have. Okay, so that completes that. We found our Cory's trail, so we do not have to roll again. Yeah, I know. Ooh, ow. What? Broke a rib from the inside. Ouch. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, there's that. Okay, so first actual location card. There you go. Thank you. And we get brown ground. Yeah, it's brown. It's just brown. Um, the ground opens into a massive pool, brimming with a creamy and rancid substance. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Um, the survivors may brave the muck. If they do, they each gain a courage and roll on the table. Roll re three random hunt events if you don't brave the muck. Wow. Um, so, a one, which I'll probably roll... Uh, lose but all but one survival and gain 10 insanity. Ouch. Two through eight, suffer three plus one D10 brain event damage. Okay, I think we're braving the muck. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Chicago Bear, let's do this. Let's do this. Eight, I suffer... Nine brain event damage. Okay, Grumpy, how grumpy are you feeling today? Oh, a lot. Very lot. He suffers 12 brain event damage, so he hits light damage. Okay. Uh, for Death Star? Bam! Hey. hey, we actually have somebody watching on YouTube. Thank you! You leap from encrusted nugget to encrusted nugget and safely cross. Skip the next space on the hunt board. If you move over or onto the quarry space, you ambush the monster. Hmm. And, uh, Death Star. Okay. I uh, is going to suffer... Eight brain event damage. He's still good. He is? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so we skip a spot? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> And now we get a random hunt event. Oh, you should give me oh. the card. There you go. Oh. 34. At least it isn't, uh, what is it, 43? <laughs> it yeah. sucked an instant die on the hunt. We might just, like, look that over <laughs> if that happened. Crippling misery. Each survivor rolls 1d10. The lowest scoring survivor or survivors in cases of ties becomes a straggler. If any survivor or survivors has the anxiety disorder, they are the straggler. Do not roll. Okay, not a problem for me. Not a problem here either. So lowest? Yeah. We got a tie on three. Okay, so that is going to be Iridanus. And, and Chicago Bear. The straggler is lost in a moment of profound self-doubt. They slip, not having the will to catch themselves, and stumble off a steep hill of stone faces. They land awkwardly with a crunch. Suffering the broken leg severe injury. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so that's going to be a uh, negative one permanent move. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, negative one permanent movement and gain one blade. So Chicago Bear really needed to go down to uh, uh, three movement. Mm hmm. Wow. Wow. That's, that's special. Uh, we will probably reset some of these injuries for uh, our, uh, our next special hunt. <laughs> uh, okay, and then... Stop rolling, that man. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, sobbing to themselves, they come to grips with just how terrible their life is and gain one understanding. <laughs> If the straggler has binge eating disorder, they wipe out away their tears and reach out to a ni nearby critter, instinctually cramming it into their mouth for comfort. Draw one random vermin resource and consume it. Do you have binge eating on the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, we didn't see that one coming. Yeah, we're really rocking this right Oh, yeah, now. yeah. Broken legs, broken ribs. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is how you start a level three fight. Oh, yeah. This is part of why level three fights suck. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny, because you don't think the hunt is that bad until, like, you actually really start having to go through all of these hunt events, and then you're like... Oh god, the hunt's really bad. Yes. I think I prefer the showdowns to the hunts. 
Okay, so you... Oh, wait. What? I did not suffer the broken leg because I have a dried acanthus. Oh, you lucky son of a bitch. Yes. So, uh, he is still at five moment. You crammed down your throat a nightmare tick. Okay. Consume this and roll a d10. Seven. Gain permanent plus one evasion. Oh, shit, man. Huh? Yeah. Permanent plus one evasion. Glad you didn't roll one to three. Okay. The tick grabs the roof of your mouth and sucks out all your blood. You die? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> okay. This is why I didn't tell you what not to roll. Okay. Because we would have rolled that. Oh, wait. He couldn't actually do that, though. Why? Because he can't consume. He may have the binge eating disorder, but he can't consume shit. He's got a shattered jaw. <laughs> so he just grabs the random ver vermin resource and goes... And then throws it away. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, alright. So that happened. Yeah. Okay, your turn. <laughs> so now it's Death Star's turn. Yep. 83. Fle oh, fuck us. What? Flesh monolith. Oh, the no. survivors approach a five-sided monolith made of flesh and that stretches into the darkness overhead. Limbs and face faces, both human and bizarre, protrude from all sides. The event revealer gains plus one courage and investigates. So who was this now? It's still, it, it just moved back over yeah. me, right? So it's Death Star. Uh, come on. Don't die. Don't die. We're like drawing all the worst hunt events. The monolith's limbs spring to life, grabbing hold before you can react. They join your body parts to its own in a with maddening efficiency as you are ripped apart in a shower of gore. Dead. The horrible sight causes all other survivors to suffer three brain event damage, and they all gain post-traumatic stress disorder. If the settlement settlement has survival of the fittest, you fight the monolith. The horrible edifice tears your arm off, but you bite one of its appendages and return severing it. The monolith retreats into the ground as you roar in triumph. Suffer the dismembered arm severe injury and gain plus one permanent strength. All other st survivors stand in awe and gain plus three insanity and plus one courage. So... So you dismember arm. That's much yeah. better than dying. Yeah, so he is dismembered arm. Uh, Plus three insanity to everybody I'm not going to complain about. Dismembered arm. Wow. Dismembered arm. Yeah, pretty much everybody hates the monolith. Hey, we didn't die, actually, Sage. We didn't die! We have survival of the fittest! Oh, it used to not have survival of the fittest. Yeah, he added survival of the fittest to a bunch of things to make it more desirable to use. Oh, thank the God. Of the fittest. Oh my God, thank God. <laughs> yeah. So now he has seven strength, and... I love how you lose an arm and gain a strength. Yes. Uh, all of the survivors gain three insanity. Okay. And now, overwhelming darkness. I put the book away again. Yep. Okay. Survival. Overwhelming darkness. All right. We have Song of the Brave, so we can walk the path of the brave. Okay. Everybody rolls. Yep. Okay. Chicago gets a seven. Seven. With your lantern held high, you cut a path through the teeming darkness. Suffer one event damage to your arms. Oh, that's not too bad. Except he has almost no armor. Five, I'm grumpy. A massive whale swims overhead. Your guts quiver with its booming cries. You vomit in fear, but keep a brave face. Gain negative one evasion token. After this event, all other survivors gain plus one survival from your bold display. So both of mine rolled that. So that character who lost a crap ton of survival is going to get a total of three, unless they're the person who got that roll. Okay, so we get... The three negative evasion tokens. But yes. we'll get rid of those once we arrive. Yes. So I'm not updating that on screen. So we have completed the Overwhelming Darkness event. Yes, we that did. That was this character, I guess. Yep. And now back to me. Uh, what's that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Oh, God, Fist and Tooth Badass. Those are yeah. they're great. They I love really them. They really did switch out the survival of the fittest to really make it a lot more sensible of choice. Yeah, they did. Okay, so... New hunt that we've never seen. 
sudden rumbling. You hear a low rumbling and suddenly you see an enormous ball rolling right towards you. Roll 1d10. 1. Uh, if the result is equal to or lower than your courage, you stand your ground. Otherwise, you dive away. Yeah, so my courage is 9. Yeah. Or no, no, 8. Okay. Equal to or lower, I stand my ground. So roll 1d10. Yeah, it feels totally Indiana Jones. <laughs> yes, and it's this thing probably rolling at me. Oh, yeah. 7. You stop the ball with your bare hands. All survivors gain a courage. Okay. And I see the truth. Oh, wow. <laughs> the greatest courage is achieved when the past and future are abandoned. The void that remains is a dark, endless well of strength. Fear and pain are your nourishment, and you will feast. You suddenly recall meeting a strange masked man who, for a moment, opened your second eyelids. What you saw filled your mouth with the taste of your own death. Suffer the blind, severe head injury and taste death. If you are already blind, do not suffer it again. So were you already blind? Um, yes. Okay. All right, taste death, roll 1d10. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Are you already blind? Yes, we have a lot of blind characters. Eight. Uh... We have the cannibalized death principle, so your death tastes sour instead. When your second eyelids opened, you saw thousands of small life forms swimming through the air. They crawled over you, stealing tastes of your sweat and blood. Death was near. You wondered how your fear tasted. A puckering, sour flavor filled your mouth, and you decided that you must never die. Cha gain the following ability. Sour death. When you are knocked down, you may encourage yourself, even if you're deaf. If you do, gain plus one strength token. Both my characters now have that. Yeah, everybody's got sour death. Yeah. Except for uh, Death Star, who has a sweet but death. But I have shattered jaws on both of my characters, so I'm not encouraging myself. Okay. All right, so monster controller moves. Oh, fist and tooth with acid, palms, and sharp, yes. Yep, yep, that's a good day. Yeah. Okay, so random hunt event. Twelve. Me and Rolling Low. Oh yeah, for our next update, when we start our next campaign, we're going to be adding some more details about the monsters, but we're also going to keep track of all ones and tens we roll. <laughs> Destiny bound. The survivors collectively feel a heightened level of anticipation. Their goal is close at hand. The event revealer gains plus one courage. The survivors may skip the next hunt space. If this movement starts the showdown, the survivors ambush their quarry. I'd say we skip. This yeah, I say we skip. We don't need another random hunt. Yeah. Whee! All right, so that is that's it. Oh, that's, that's it. It's it's good. And I didn't gain courage because I was maxed. Yeah, I can't gain courage anymore. So please hand me the card. There this we go. Be our... Hey, uh, we've got three people on YouTube now. Maybe streaming to YouTube's already better than Mixer. Yeah. <laughs> Bugman. A cloaked form appears from the darkness. Its garment bulges in inhuman ways, and ichor drips from a shadow-clad mouth. Roll one d ten. If the result is equal to or lower than your courage, you investigate, otherwise you panic. I think you're equal to or lower. Yes. Yay! So we want High Courage to do the Dung Beetle Knight, I'm gathering. It's complicated. This one actually kind of has some bad stuff to it. Mmm. Like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do if he, like, if I roll a 1 through 6, it actually really <coughs> sucks. Oh. Like, really sucks. <laughs> so don't roll a 1 through 6. I think a three is a one through six. You gain a fecal salve and must add it to your gear grid. Oh, oh. My Death Star, yeah. Oh, that's a bad day. Oh yeah. It's a super I think bad you're day. losing the shield. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, or you could lose the green charm. Yeah. We, yeah, the green charm we were saying is not very useful. It's a fifty percent chance of not dying. Yeah, but I think I, the I, shield gives extra armor, and you can block. Yeah. All right. So for right now, I will use drop the green charm charm and replace it with the fecal cell. Yeah, just keep that out. Yeah. Um, what do, what does the fecal cell do for us? Uh, when you depart, gain plus one survival. Activate, you are not a threat until you attack. If you have the priority target token, remove it. We are out of rerolls. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody's like, yeah, get rid of the green charm. Get gone, gone. Okay, so that's it. And now we encounter him. 
Yep. All right. So. Okay, shove the randoms. Thank you. All right. Uh, could you take the? Oh yes. Let's not send that one. Whee! <laughs> okay. So the setup is specific. There is no random pulling. Wait, no random terrains? No. Oh wow. So we. There's already a bunch of terrains. So we do get these three. That is what it looks like. Okay, so we've got him front and center. We've got the dung ball behind. I need the bug patch. Two back. And. Yeah, it is a shame that we didn't get an amber from. Oh. We don't need the fifth for the blue because we've got the cycloid uh, scale. Um, because the cycloid scale armor, we technically have four hookups, and then the blue charm provides the fifth. Uh, so we don't need the we don't need to keep the green charm around. Uh. Okay, I think that's all set up, and then. Place survivors on any of those blue spaces. Yeah, note that it's basically setting up those, us up like goddamn ten pins. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of horrible. Yeah. There you go. Well, I'm sure that that was not deliberate in any way. Okay, so I think Rumpy's going to be... So, on arrival, we all lose an evasion, like our negative one evasion tokens because yep. of Song of the Brave. So Sweet. go ahead and toss those. And we also gain a survival, I believe, because of the Whisker Harp. Yes, which we were already at 13, so that shouldn't be an issue. Well, wasn't there one of your guys who got knocked down to, like, something ridiculously low? No, no, he lost uh, Insanity. Oh, okay. Yeah, I took the Insanity hit on that one. I thought he lost... Oh, okay. All right. Um... So, he has eight basic cards. We have Oracle's Eye... So Oracle's Eye is a special ability from People of the Star campaign. What it allows is it allows you to lay out the cards that are going into the eye deck visibly before shuffling them. So that's what you see uh, Nicole doing right now. So we got all of those green cards. That So any of these green cards, mm -hmm. the green effect takes part in place if he doesn't, if he isn't next to the ball. If he isn't next yeah. to it. So we green, want him next to it. Well... No, because Ricochet Shot, do not perform this card. Instead, perform Ground Pound and then Basic Action. So. Oh. Okay. And I will go over all of his individual cards. We also need two uh, Speed Tokens and two Damage Tokens. In okay. addition to his Evasion and Accuracy. Here you go. Thank you. And here you go. Oh, Oof. I think, did you, oh, there it is. Wow. Yeah. I really hope I get the claw head out on him, unlike we did with the dragon. Yeah, so we get nine advanced cards. Ow! So note he likes stinky survivors, so we're going to need to keep that in mind. Okay, none of mine are stinky, but I'm sure he's going to help with that. Yes. So there's one mood. Okay, so not a big deal there. All but one card. So there we go, and then last but not least, we get two of the legendary cards. Ah, so he has, ooh. 19 that... cards in his deck. Yeah. His toughness is 18, by the way. Oh, fuck. And we haven't even gotten to the really fun shit. <laughs> Alright, Swordmaster, when this comes into play, the monster gains plus one speed token. Perform basic action, replace the monster's basic action with a speed three, accuracy two plus, damage six. After damage, bleed one and minus two to severe injury results. Did you bring bandages? No. Uh, we're <laughs> going to have a bad day. When yeah. this comes into play, all non-blind survivors are knocked down. When a survivor attacks the monster on a perfect hit, they lose one survival and suffer star brain damage unless they are blind. Ouch. So, one of mine's blind. That's uh, good for you. It looks like one of yours might be. No. Nope. I have a shattered jaw and that's it. Oh... Ooh, at least it's not the old master. 
Yeah, the old master is the legendary version of the Dung Beetle Knight. Oh, there's a legendary version of him? Yeah. Oh, shit, I didn't realize that. I thought there was the only legend. The mechanics are kind of interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize there was a legendary until I was, like, poking through the book looking at stuff, and I'm like, wait, what? Wow. What makes the old master different? Uh, it's interesting. There's, like, some lead-up with a character that basically is meeting with the, uh, Dung Beetle Knight, and it gives you some stuff. So basically, like, there's some rules where you do additional wounds, um, when certain categories take place. So ah. you do, like, three more wounds if you do things in a certain way. Oh, 25 toughness? Jesus. Yeah, well, he's got 25 life. Oh. Yeah. By the way, uh, YouTube people, we do have an overlay for your chat as well, so if uh, you would like to chat or anything, feel free to do so. We are monitoring that as well, even though this is our first time streaming up there. So he has plus one accuracy and plus one evasion for being a level three, plus plus one damage and plus, plus two damage and plus two speed from being a level three, creating lots and lots of tokens for maximal fun and excitement. Yes. Then we have his abilities. Heavy load. When the re resin dung ball collides with a survivor, they lose one survival. Burrow. It is a trait and defines an action. The monster dives into the ground, select a random survivor. Unless they spend four survival, they suffer one random severe body injury and the ruptured muscle severe arm injury. No fighting arts. Then place the monster on the survivor, avoiding the resin dung ball. Oh, hi, Franco. Thank you for joining Separation Anxiety. While the monster is not adjacent to the resin dung ball, it is separated and gains at green X. If an AI or hit location card has green X, only apply those actions, effects, or special rules if the monster is separated, otherwise ignore them. So do we want to keep him by it or separate? That's a hard thing. It's complicated depending yeah. on the situation. Oh, uh, yeah. Baller. Another action. The monster spins the ball around itself with tremendous force. All survivors in the red zone, which is two squares around it, uh, suffer collision with the resin dung ball. All, kind of all destructible terrain in the red zone place the resin dung ball in front of the monster. So that when does that happen? Whenever it says do baller. Oh. So this happens when it says do burrow. This happens when it says do baller. Ouch. Power forward. If he is separated, do not perform this card. At the start of each monster turn, pick target for the stinky survivor. Uh, turn to face target and perform baller. Move the ball 2d10 spaces through the target. On collision, any survivor suffers 5 damage to star hit locations. Then full move the monster towards the ball. So if he's separated, that happens? No. If he's separated, it doesn't happen. Okay, so we need to get him separated. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly, ground pound, which is mistakenly listed as, um, where is it? Ah, uh, here we go. Mistakenly listed as prepared tunnels on his card. Okay. Uh, ground pound, another action. If the monster the monster slams the ground, precisely altering its network of prepared tunnels, all survivors adjacent to the monster suffer bash. Then the vibrations create a natural ramp. Move the ball 1d10 spaces towards the monster. On collision, any survivors suffer 5 damage to star hit locations. Oh, god damn it. So don't stay between the ball and him. Yeah. Because it looks like he ground pounds if the ball separated. Yeah, so his toughness is 18. Oh, Jesus. Well, we can handle that. That I'm not worried about. By the way, he has uncancelable reactions. Oh, yay. Alrighty then. So oh. now we reveal the top card of the hit location deck, which is his trap. Did you shuffle that? Yes, of course I shuffled it. I don't they think you watch me shuffle it. <laughs> I'm not sure you shuffled it. So what's the trap going to do to us? Well, I suppose we can, you know, savor the trapness. Yes. All survivors are doomed. Full move directly towards the attacker. If the monster is adjacent to the attacker, it picks them up and leaps high into the air. The monster lands next to the resin dung ball and slams the attacker inside. Place the monster in any space adjacent to the ball. Attacker suffers five damage to star hit locations and gains the smell world survivor status card. I take it you get stinky. 
When you gain this, remove your survivor from the board and place them on this card. At the start of your act, roll 1d10. On a result of 8+, plus, you escape, otherwise gain one bleeding token. A survivor adjacent to the ball may spend action if they do select one survivor to escape. Escape. Place yourself adjacent to the ball, archive this card, gain the dung milk status card. <laughs> Dung milk. When you gain this, you are knocked down and suffer star damage to your body that ignores armor. So, it is an instant severe body injury. Yep. Gain negative one evasion and negative one accuracy tokens. While you have dung milk, you are stinky. Oh my god. So, we're hoping that uh, you avoid that card with your uh, wonderful blue charm, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is your home now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so in any case... um. I think I'm going to start uh, with... Death Star. Death Star. And Death Star... Well, no, because he goes first. This oh, is yeah. a monster, not a nemesis. So oh, we yeah. we need to figure out where we're going to stand. <sighs> so this is Chicago Bear. This is Grumpy. Which one is that? Oh, wait. Death Star, and then Eridanus. That seems like a fair layout. Okay, so Death Star is starting first. So Death Star is going to... There's a shield you can make that makes the star become monster level minus one. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, the blue charm still works. Yeah, the blue like, charm's good. See, the thing is, is that he has... Yeah. The cycloid scale set is weird. Yeah, because he has four affinities off of the cycloid scale set, and then one from the blue charm. So yes, it is working fine. Oh, it's in the green armor set. That would make perfect sense, yes. When this comes into play, the monster gains plus one speed token. Perform basic action. Replace the monster's basic action with closest threat. That would be my character. Oh wait, start of his turn. Shit. Oh. Um, start of his turn. At the start of each monster turn, furthest stinky survivor. None. Uh, no. There are a bunch of stinky survivors out here, because I've got a monster grease and he's got a fecal cell. Oh, monster grease is stinky? Shit. So yes. do I. Okay. So, we can choose either Eridanus. Okay, it has to be Eridanus then, I, th okay. I think. Okay. Yeah. So, he has a movement of eight. Uh, turn to face target and perform baller. Move the ball 2d10 spaces through the target on collision. Survivor suffers 5 damage to star hit locations. Okay. So, um... He is going to target him. Uh, Eridanus is going to dash, I think. But 2d10, he'll still make it to you. I, oh. Not necessarily, but ah. the thing is, is that... I think that it might, because it will roll angled, and I'm not sure it may hit uh, him. So I guess we got to figure that out first. Wait, it rolls angled? Yes. This is a complicated fight, man. Oh. So, move the ball 2D. Th when an AI card instructs you to move the ball towards a target or through a target, determine if the ball is moving straight or angled, and then move it according to the following rules. We cannot draw a cardinal direction line through the character, so it is moving angled. Okay. If you cannot draw a straight line in a cardinal direction from the ball to its target, draw a line from the center of the ball to its target. The monster controller moves the ball along this path. The ball would move off the showdown board, continue its movement along the board edge. Instead, if movement is unclear, the monster controller decides it. Okay, I can see the line. Okay. Okay, so, and now, if how does it determine if it hits stuff? Like While moving it, down the line. It has to move. It has to move across the, like, basically the line. It has to move on the line, essentially. Okay. And then it, but it's still moving in cardinal directions, sort of, kind of. Can it go through the Dung Beetle Knight? Um. Uh, oh, okay. Uh. It does not block the Dung Beetle's line of sight. Uh, it will not move through, be placed, or end its movement on the ball. Oh, wait, it says perform baller, so it's going to go in front of him first. Okay. So, um... Ah, somebody just told us that. Yeah. Thank you, Parla. Paria. 
So I think that it might that it might be reasonable for it to move like that. Yeah. In which case it would not hit him, which means I don't need to dash. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to dash. Uh, and then, so move the ball 2d10 spaces from the target. So, I mean, it would give me a better chance of not taking a shit ton of damage. Average is going to be 11 spaces. 259, that's a nice, oh wow, that's nice. Yeah, but it's so hard to get, man. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to dash anyways. So. so trying to just okay. away. Oh. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, so on collision, any survivor suffers five damage to star hit locations. Ouch. Yes. Um, I was not knocked down after collision with a monster, so I am knocked down. Okay. And then I need the star hit locations. It's going to be body, head, and arms. Five each. Can you dodge any? No. Oh. Dude, it doesn't work that way. It's never worked that way. Oh yeah, it's not an attack. I'll move the monster towards the ball. So that's eight spaces. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, Swordmaster, when it comes into play, monster gains plus one speed token, perform basic action. Here's the speed token. Thank you. So now he's at plus three speed. Ouch. Place the monster's basic action with closest threat. That is going to be Death Star. Okay. Uh, so, oh god. Um, Death Star is going to use his sweet death ability to surge. And get, uh, oh, you need tokens. Yeah, a couple of blocks. There you go. So he gains block two by surging his shield. Yep. And I need six dice. What's his? Uh, his evasion is uh, four. And then you get. Don't forget, he has plus one accuracy virtue. Yeah. So it's three. So he hits on a five plus. Who? Roll low. Roll low. Yeah, of course he does. Oh. You got that a couple blows. That is going to be four hits. Hey, could have been worse. I'm going to roll them. And then choose which two to block. That is oh. going to be four bodies. <laughs> <laughs> so I block two. My slow clap processor is working. Uh, I'm going to dodge one. And take one body. And take one body. For how much damage? Four, eight. Wait, it's six base? Yeah. Oh, that's a bad day. Hey, you had armor. Had. had. The optimal word. <laughs> uh, I also take one bleed. Wow. That hurt. Oh, yeah. That hurt a lot. Okay, is he done? Uh, yes. Uh, if we break his blade... Then he is. Then we archive Swordmaster. Oh fuck us! Oh right, when the dung resin resin dung ball collides with the survivor, they lose one survival. So Iridanus lost another survival because he just lost it. Because why not? Oh. Yeah, pretty much. Mother. So he is separated. Yeah. He's not next to the ball anymore, guys. So I think I'm going to start with Chicago Bear. Okay. I'm going to surge. See if I keep it with the rawhide set. Oh yeah. What's the tactics card? Oh, shit. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Tactics could prove useful to us suddenly. Mm -hmm. Recharge all of our armor points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we get the lock formation. When the survivors are standing in a 2x2, two two, uh, they ignore the first hit from a monster's attack. Hmm. He is going to stand up at the start of the survivor's turn because of the stuff. 
Okay. Fist and Tooth. Yeah, Fist okay. and Tooth. Okay, so I'm going to start with Chicago no, Bear. No, you are not. Like, why would you start with Chicago Bear? Like, the, the, don't you want him to not, like, hit the fucking trap? Oh, right! The clawhead arrow would be bad for that. Yeah. I forgot about that. Little details. Okay. I wander around to the back. That gains me one evasion until my next act. And I have another plus one accuracy, so I roll five dice. Here's a plus one evasion token for you to use for that. Thank you. Alright. Oh. What do you hit on? Uh, anything. But a two, or but a one. Yeah, even with the negative evasion, I So think. five hits. Yeah. So, see if your uh, charm works. Parry. Ugh. Alright, so, um, yeah, let's try that charm. So I gotta roll a six plus. Come on, get that six plus. Yes! Six plus. So it shuffles back in and you do the other four. Yes. Very nice. That That's a better start. You've redeemed your uh, wonderful deck shuffling for this yes. game. Oh, shoot. What? I forgot. How many uh, plus uh, things did I roll? How many nines or tens did I roll? One. Okay. One that I remember. So I got another survival because of my perfect hit ability on my black sword. Ah, nice. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. So, um, are any of these first strike? No. All right. Club shield or pickaxe cannot be. Oh, right. I am a sword master or a proficient with the sword, and because I am proficient with the sword. Uh, I can make a wound attempt and then select a hit location nice. and resolve with that attack. So what do you wound on and what do you crit on? I wound on a... I wound on an anything. I have 30 strength. Okay, so anything but one. seven strength. Uh, yeah, anything but one. And then I crit on a 9 or a 10. Okay. Or, no, a 10. And I have sharp because I am attacking him from his blind spot. I don't think you need to worry about sharp. No. Uh, so, okay. So what do I want to wound? Okay. By the way, which color dye is the wound? Main wound? White. White. Okay. Mm. What do I want to do? Okay, so that would not be useful. Plus oh, could you slide the cards over? You're slightly off screen. these cards. <laughs> are you saying this, these hit locations are not beneficial to the player? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I will use Filthy Wings. And, uh, yeah. So that's just the wound? Yep. Now, who has Faded Blow? Uh, he has Faded Blow, which I didn't use because, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I can't really say just, you know, yeah. whatever. Okay, so that was my first sword hit. Um, now you have to pick one. Yes. <laughs> no problem, Sage. Monster Burrows, random survivor, four survival, place the monster on the survivor, avoiding the resin dung ball. So this is going to cancel. So I can archive the Century Carapace if I attack it, but I will not wound him okay. by doing that. That might not be and a bad idea. And he's going to cancel the rest of the attack. Ooh. Yeah. Is I mean, we should be wounding him. So if at all possible, I'd go for those other ones. Yeah, except the problem is, is that the reason why I have to do it anyways is because the iridescent abdomen, he's separated, which means that he'll ground pound first, which would bash me. Oh, okay. Which would mean that I cannot, um, I would, they would cancel the attack. Okay. Uh, and then the untrained parry is, I have to crit, and I'm not a crit character. Okay, yeah, so. then I get rid of that. So I'm attacking the Century Carapace, I don't care about your stupid game plus six toughness, the tough plus six toughness to wound this location. Yeah, that doesn't matter for you. No. So, uh, that's... That's a wound. Fucking crazy amount, so... 
Reaction cannot be cancelled. Instead of wounding the monster, archive this card and gain plus one survival. Oh. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, if you attacked with a pickaxe, gain an additional plus three survival. If the monster is level three, perform burrow. Burrow. Monster dives into the ground. Select a random survivor. You. Okay, that is going to be Death Star. He, unless they spend four survival, which he totally is going to do, because otherwise I'd suffer a random severe body injury and the ruptured muscle severe arm injury. Which sounds bad. And then place the monster on the survivor. And uh, so I suffer collision. <laughs> okay. Uh, which knocks me... Five back. Five back. And... Back. Um, okay, he is a shield master. Uh, do, 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 do. I am not knocked down after collision with a monster. Oh, very nice. So he gets back. He still gets up. Um, and that was not the resin dung ball. So. Okay. So. Um. Now. Uh, I can't search. So. Okay. Flip over the top card of the hit location. Wisdom potion. Yay. Is that safe for the uh, arrow? So. His reflex is that after you complete, he will use Ground Pound. Oh, so the Dung Ball will come flying. Um, yes. To him? Yes. Okay, so it will hit your one character and knock him into your other character. Yes. And when it hits someone, that's going to suck. Yeah. So we could, if Eridonis moves first and doesn't attack him. Then it'll avoid the collisions. Then it will at least avoid the collisions. I would use a dash. Uh, he can't dash. Oh, he can't? No. He can't dash because he dashed during the monster's turn. Okay. Um, let's see, is there anything that I wanted? Oh, I forgot to use Frozen Star. Mm, terrible. Yeah. Worst player ever. <laughs> All right. should be good. Yep, that's good. And then he's going to block using the hazmat shield. Ah, good. Get a couple blocks up. Yeah. Okay. So now I will move my three to here mm -hmm. and I will shoot with the claw head arrow. Okay. As my first action. Um, I need a uh, five plus to hit with this. Yay! Negative one evasion. Okay. So, so just negate his current evasion token. Okay. And now I do filthy claws. Um, I... So it's plus six, so he's got how much? Oh, and I called out filthy claws, so I get a plus... How much on that? Ten. Ten. Oh, and nice. three insanity. Oh, right, three insanity. So I'm up to ten. So that puts me at six plus 16 strength, so I need anything but a one. Okay. That's a four, so that is a wound, but not a crit. Uh, I don't think I have... Nope, not a crit. So, uh, monster performs ground pound. All right. So... The monster slams the ground, precisely altering its network of prepared tunnels. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer bash. Nobody was adjacent. The vibrations create a natural ramp. Move the ball 1d10. Spaces. <clears throat> towards the monster. On collision, any survivors suffer 5 damage to star hit locations. Okay, so not too And bad. you did a wound, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to surge. Okay. See if I keep it. I do not. So I lose survival. Yay, Rawhide. And now I start with my three, or no, I lost one. So I'm going to use the cap, the new cap cup bow, if you're not familiar with 1.5, has aim. So I drop the speed by one. I add on my own speed, so it gives me two. Mm -hmm. um, oh, flip the top. Okay. Um... So that gives me plus two accuracy, so I hit on a four plus. Okay. Two hits, and now Legendary Lungs kicks in. 
One more. So three total hits. Three total hits. No trap. So that is if I wound. Um, okay, so that's not really a problem. So filthy face is pretty good. Um, ooh, knock back three away from the attacker. That could be bad. But it would save me from a possible basic action. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wound on anything uh, but a one on filthy face. Um, or which which one was on top? Huh? Filthy face. Okay, so I wound on anything but a one with filthy face. Um, and I crit uh, because I now have my bow and I'm using mastery. So I get uh, deadly two. So, oh man, though, if you got Filthy Resin Sword, it would archive the Swordmaster. Which one is that? The last one. Oh. Just a note. Okay, I might do that second then. Yeah. Um, okay, so with Deadly 2, I have, what is it called? Um, oh, I can dash at any time, so if he gets knocked back, I can still dash up and attack for the last card. You can't dash in the middle of your attack. I can't. Yeah. Okay. Um, could I dash now? No. Okay. already attack. It already, already attacking. Okay. So... Um, I crit, I've got five basically, five luck, so I crit on a four plus. Okay. That is a crit on the first one. The crushing blow dulls the monster's senses, it gains negative one accuracy token. Nice. Archive this card. Not so nice. Okay, so I'm going to hop up to Filthy Resin. Okay. Just because that sounds really good. Yeah, uh, it sucks that you might take basic action, but... Yeah, now this one I only get 9 strength on it, so I wound on a 9 plus, crit on a 4 plus. <laughs> oh. oh! Oh, come on! That's the biggest problem, is now you take Swordmaster. That was the... I just realized too late. No, I knew I was, I was hoping... I had a high chance of crit. I, I had to try it. Alright, the monster's basic action is going to be a speed of six. What's your evasion? Not as much as I'd like. Uh, two. Okay. So he hits on a four plus. Okay. Um, yeah. Yay. Speed of six, four plus. I may die. Yep. And he's running up to me, right? Uh, yes. Four hits. Four hits. Four bodies again? Please no. Though, honestly, how much damage is he doing per? Eight. Doesn't matter. Every die rolls a crit. Okay, so two heads, two legs. And, okay, I'm going to dodge a head. Head dodged. Let's take that first roll on the head. Okay, note you have negative two to all severe injury results. What? Card of the card. Ow. Ow. Yep. Ow. 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 Yeah. Ow. Eight. Minus uh, six. Deaf. You won't hear it coming. Suffer negative one permanent evasion. The injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain one bleed. So that's two bleeds, by the way, because this also now has a bleed attached to it. The card does? Yeah. So I gained two bleeds? Yeah. For each one? No. Oh. Just, I needed you to put the bleed on because of the card, and oh. then you also had the bleed from the death. Now, yeah, you're totally fucked because there's no way that you're going to survive this. Most likely. Oh, no, I don't think that there's... There are legs left. without bleeds. I have two legs. Yeah, but it's minus two. Yeah. Uh, none of the other legs have no bleeds. And you, anyways, blood geyser. Blood shoots from your femoral artery at an alarming rate, killing you in seconds. Does it give anybody anything? Uh, oh yeah, you can't dodge in reactions. Oh. Duh. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're dead. Woohoo! First down! Though, to be fair, we kind of expected that Chicago Bear would go quick. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that your other character... I think has not gone yet. No, he has not. Nope. Solo him! 
Uh, with my one speed. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Hey, man, shit happens. And yes. we're now no longer using that tactics card for several reasons. Yeah, several. Okay, so I will hit easily. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have run up his side. Okay, iridescent arm. Um, okay, this isn't too bad. Okay, so I wound on anything but a one. Mm -hmm. 16 strength does wonders, and that's before my weapon. Mm -hmm. um, and I crit on... My weapon has deadly, so that... Oh, God, I can do math. So, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Six plus for crit, wound on anything but a one. Well, you didn't wound him. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell my rolls are winning us this game. Oh, man, this is great. Okay, impervious and super dense. Discard this and draw a new hit location. Well, fuck you too, game. <laughs> <laughs> so you can dash and attack no i can't oh i thought that I star can't could surge again oh. i already surged this turn oh, i forgot about that well yeah. there's a the ball won't hit anybody right now okay pass monster controller our first round went amazing oh yeah i'm so pleased with our first round we knocked it out of the park Oh yeah. Well, somebody got it. Something got knocked out of the park. <laughs> we have so showed our mastery of the game. Okay. Well, at least we do not perform this card because the ball is separated currently. Yay. So now AI card, resin sword slash closest knockdown survivor in range. That would be zero. Closest survivor. Rink. Rink. Hi. Speed of five. I have no evasion. Oh my god. Wait, oh. why do I not have evasion? I should have two evasion. I have two evasion. Okay, so he hits you on a four plus. Uh, you're not gonna like this. I have armor. Yeah, it's not gonna really matter that much. <laughs> uh, so four plus, two misses. Oh. So three hits. Two arms and one legs. Okay. Um. Shit. I think we sped through that too quick. You were supposed to. You were gonna try to block. Yeah. Okay. You need to. Yeah. <laughs> I usually don't have a shield. Uh huh. Um. You shit though, because we've got the shield stuff. So I know. Now I do. Out. This uh, the like the first fight I actually we had a, actually a shield for this guy was the dragon. Okay. okay, blood paint, yeah, blood paint, we were doing that sometimes in the game. Yeah. Okay, so just, he would have surged, that would block one, and then he'll dodge one. Okay. So... What are you eating? Arms or legs? I'll eat a leg. Okay, leg day. How much damage? It's gonna be eight. Oh, it's eight damage? Then arms. Okay. You also take two bleeds. And suffer knockback 11, which thankfully just hits you with the wall. Yay! And then perform basic action. Hold on. And I'm knocked down because of heavy damage. I barely hit heavy. Closest threat. So that is going to be Death Star. Hi, Death Star. Uh, I think I'm going to surge to activate my shield again. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Oh, you need two more? <laughs> um, so, six rolls. Ooh, what does he hit on? Uh, he hits on... Five plus, I think it was last time. Uh, yes. So, I'm actually, it's gonna be... Well, no. So, his accuracy is two. I forgot to spend Iridonis. Fucking damn, damn. 
Oh, the uh, Frozen Star. Effectively, he has an evasion of five right now because he moved. So if the Cycloid skill hood gives him an evasion of five. So it's seven plus. So, so it's you get seven hit plus. by two. So I get hit by two. I, I discard the Beacon Shield and nice. I get damage. Oh, didn't take wound. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, no wounds. All right, so that is the end of that. Okay, Fist and Tooth Mastery, I stand up. Okay, and there we, we go. We go. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um. Uh, top card? Is discard this card and draw a new hit location. Yay! So translation, screw you. Okay, I'm going to move my four and give this a shot. Mm -hmm. That is a hit. Easily. Oh wait, discard and replace this with another hit location. Because he's wow. separated. So I'll just show discard that. Discard this and destroy another hit location. Oh, yay. Here's your actual card. Sorry about that. Swarm of bot flies. First strike impervious. So you ain't doing no damage. A swarm of bot flies gushes out from under the Dung Beetle Knight's armor. Roll a d10 and add your courage. I have courage. 18. If the result is greater than 8, you boldly ignore the flies and archive this card. Okay. Okay, I will surge. Oh, well, let's look at the top card. Okay, you are getting a century carapace, which uh, means we will have him perform burrow. Oh, which isn't too bad. Well, it's minus four survival to a random survivor, but other than that, yeah. we don't really have much of a choice. That's a hit. Can I actually wound this? No, yes. you cannot do damage to it. Oh, you can't? Look at the wound effect. This reaction cannot be canceled. Uh, instead of wounding the monster, archive this card and gain a survival. Wow. Ouch! <laughs> it's a wound! <laughs> Yes. So he performs burrow, and I that get... That is with the plus six toughness, right? Because he has plus six toughness on this attack. Yeah, I have four strength on my weapon. I have 16 strength on my character, so that's 22 total. And... He's currently at a 24. Okay. Really? Yeah, because plus six toughness, and his base toughness is 18. So I think you just wound, but it is not that obvious. Hold on. So, 16 strength, plus 4 from the axe. 20. Plus 2. Okay. I think I'm short. Yeah, 22, when you need to get uh, 24. So you did not wound him. Failed. He still burrows. Yes. Lose one survival instead of game. Um, this still gets archived, or how does this no. work? Because it doesn't say archive this location. Oh, yeah. Okay, shit. Ouch. Yep. That's rough. Burrow, the monster dives into the ground. Select a random survivor. Well, oh. I only need to roll one. It's me! Okay. Unless you spend four survival, you suffer one random severe body injury and the ruptured muscled severe ar ar arm injury. Spent. Okay. And then he, yeah. Okay. Alrighty then. Uh, but you can reroll with Axe Specialist. Oh shit, that's a good point. Fuck. Okay, that would have reverse archive it. Same thing happens outside of that. Uh, it, no, you gain a survival instead of losing a survival. Exactly. So plus two survival essentially. Okay, cool. Thank you, Ties. This is why we like people watching. Yeah. Alrighty then. So, top card is going to be not the trap. Perform ground pound and then perform basic action targeting the attacker. Oof. So don't be in the way of the ball. Yes. Ah, get behind him. Nice. Right. Gain your evasion. And five of dice. And he needs a seven plus. Um, oh, wait. Uh, do you want to kick Frozen Star? Sure. I will kick Frozen Star. So now it's a nine plus. No. 
Oh. Frozen Star is an evasion. It's accuracy. It makes it harder for him to hit. It doesn't make it harder for us to oh, hit. Oh, right. For us to hit. Good point. So, I hit on anything but a one because he's not, because he's fixed. So, yep. the mandibles. Uh, you can push those. Like you can put one five. further to the left. Yep. Okay, so no trap, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. Yeah, it has its You can still thing. surge, don't forget. No, I can't. I you, already surged. You did? On his turn. I surged to activate my shield. Oh, so I forgot about me. that. I forgot you just surged during that. My bad. Yeah, okay. Oh. And don't forget, you get to pick. So you can roll and then pick. Yeah, that's a good point. Did, and you've used Faded Blow. Uh, yeah, I will use Faded Blow right now. Oh, you're using it now. That's oh. it. That is enough to wound because I can't basically fail. Yep. There's my thing. So the question is, which location do I want to hit? So that was a nine. Unfortunately, I can't correct. So uh, turn to face directly away from the actor attacker. Already is. Survivors suffer knockback seven. So that would ruin that. So what I am going to do is... Wait, you crit. No, I didn't. You rolled a nine. I don't have any luck. You said so you I crit don't. on a nine ten last time. I fucked up. Okay. I don't have any luck. I said after that I don't I don't actually oh. crit on that. Um Smashed into the ball, so I guess I'll go for the iridescent leg. Okay. So then I wound it. The monster crushes a keystone. Move the ball one d ten spaces towards the monster and cancel the effect on this location. So one, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. So that is that. Deduct two wounds. So hey. Blow. Progress. Yeah. Progress. Progress. I am then going to also do. I'm going to do filthy gut next. Okay. Uh, since it will still not um, move up on him. Ah. So that is still enough because I just have so many fucking strength. Yeah, you've got insane strength. So you do wound. I wound. And then the ball moves four towards him, which means it's next to him. He's no longer separated. Uh, but the reaction is still cancelled. Okay, cool. Um... I will do iridescent duck. Okay. Oh, no wound. No Failure. Wound. So it is a reflex. Turn to face directly away from the attacker. That's already the case. All survivors in its blind spot suffer knockback seven. Okay. And that ends the attack. Okay. I'm thinking we want the other character. The next is going to be Swarm of Thought Flies, by the way. Oh, yay. I think we want the next character, your other character, to knock the ball away from him. Okay. So you have to get, you would want to get to the side, the the front of the game board. On that side of the ball. Which would mean I'd have to run. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Okay, uh, now you uh, roll a die to push at 1d5 spaces. Okay. Roll high! Roll high! Oh. Nope. Nope, didn't get it away from him. Oh, and this is gonna suck. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is gonna suck. Yeah. Gonna suck a lot. Mm hmm. All Though, right. can the ball run it, roll across the front since there's not room? Doesn't say that it can't. <sighs> But we can't place it in front of him. Uh, no. Okay, so there is one other thing. Okay, so Eridanus then, at the end of his turn, because he has the leather boots, moves up one. And, and then, then surges, surges to push it again. To push it again. Which means you will get it far enough. Go three. Good. Okay, that works. All right, so that is the end of our turn. Monster controller moves. And first... 
We do not do power forward because he is separated from the ball. Good. We just skip directly to the AI card. Okay. So for our AI card, we have Resin Ball Shot. That one really wants to be a green card, but we can't act. But it doesn't have anything written on it. It really bothers me. Yeah. Um. Furthest stinky survivor. None of us. Or wait, no. I have Monster Grease on mine. I have Monster Grease and Fecal Salve, so all of us are stinky. So that for the stinky survivor is going to be Death Star. Okay. Um, turn to face the target and perform Baller. That doesn't make any sense. Um, I think it has to be canceled or something. What? The thing, because Baller is only supposed to happen when he when it's adjacent to him. Oh, oh yeah, and this is a green card. You yeah, can't see it on like, screen because we're canceling out green on our green screens. Yeah, but it's it it's colored green, it except is. it isn't actually canceled. Yeah, so that has to be. Yeah. Show another green card if you've got one there. We don't have any other green cards. We okay. have to go through the AI deck. But we know the greens do that, like uh, if you show the push forward. Yeah, but there, it probably is not do not perform this card. It's probably honestly perform basic action instead. That's my guess. But it doesn't have that. I know, but it's probably supposed to be perform basic so action So what would instead. Baller do? Baller is the monster spins the ball around itself with tremendous force. All uh, survivors in the red zone indicated above suffer uh, damage, suffer collision with the resin dung ball. Okay, so that would only work if he's attached. So I think that that can't happen. Yeah, which is why I think that he probably performs uh, basic action instead. Um, that would make the most sense. Or we just do the second part of it. I don't think that makes any sense. Hmm. The move the ball 2d10 spaces through the target? Yeah, because he can't touch the ball. Oh, yeah. He's not next to it. And there's no basic action, so I think this card just cancels then. Nothing happens if he's not I next to the ball. I think most of the green cards had a replacement for it. They didn't just... Yeah. I don't know. This card feels broken. Without his. Yeah, I know. I think that what makes the most sense is, honestly, that we just perform basic action. Targeting the furthest stinky survivor. Um, what... Well, no, following the rules on basic action. Usually it replaces just basic action with basic... Like, it's just... it. You don't do that, you do the basic oh, action okay. instead. Yeah, that would make sense. No, the baller, baller doesn't say anything about that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yep. Okay, so how does basic action target? Okay, so closest threat. So that's going to be Eridanus. Okay. How um, many attacks and how much evasion? Six, and his evasion is going to be, he, uh, the guy hits him on a four plus, and... Don't forget your bleed token for evasion. Hold on. Uh, yeah, so five plus, and then he is going to spend a survival for Frozen Star, so it's seven, seven plus. Seven plus, and you have block up. Oh, you um, still have that up. No, you don't have, you don't get to keep block. Okay. Um... How's his armor looking? No. Okay. Uh, I am going to search for a block. Okay. So seven plus, and you've got two blocks. Yes. No hits. No hits. All right. You do keep those for now. No. Oh. It says on the next attack. Okay. So that's fine. So I rolled low good that time. Yeah. So uh, your character stands up. Okay. And I will move into... Internet says perform ground pound if no ball in range. Not basic. Oh! Okay, okay. so what would have ground pound done? Oh, we'll just move towards him. Uh, wait. Uh, ground pound is... Cards. Uh, all survivors adjacent to the monster suffer bash. So he would... Eridonis does not take bash because he is... Oh, he's not adjacent either. And I would have been knocked down. You or... were already knocked down. So okay. No, no problem. Uh, move the ball 1d10 spaces towards the monster. Okay. So, there oh, we go. Oh, okay. okay. Now I stand up. Yes. Okay, I'm going to move to Thank you very much. Very appreciated, Sage. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> there may be no official confirmation, but I... That, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. He yeah, a he hissy was... fit because he doesn't have his ball. <laughs> 
Okay, so I move along his side and attack. Which means that Eridanus gets two survival back because oh, he didn't have to. I shouldn't move because sometimes knock back three. I don't want to knock him into you. Okay. So my attack. Hit. Take a swarm of bot flies. Which I'm good at avoiding. Uh, I can't, no, can't wound this. Yeah, I crit. Go figure. Um, so yeah, it doesn't do anything to me. Okay. So the card is archived. That is both of the swarms of bot flies out of the deck. Okay. By the way. I will surge. Okay. Hit. And nope. We are getting really low on cards, by the way. Oh, it's a persistent injury. If you wound, it's an automatic crit. Yes, it is. The axe mastery. Yay, axe mastery. Sweet. Okay. That's a crit. You break the monster's horn. Gain the iridescent horn dung beetle night resource. We'll have to check it just because. It yeah. may have uh, other effect. And persistent injury. Broken horn. Affects some AI cards. Okay. Uh, oh. I can't. The card is... There is no card here for that. Oh, oh wait. Beetle horn. There you go. Okay. I guess it's the beetle horn. Looks right. Okay. Um, oh, interesting. If we had Scarification in town, you can do a horn ceremony with this. You spend it, and if you roll one to four, you die. Five plus, you gain the benefits of age one and two without gaining the hunt XP. Wow. And ignores the once in a lifetime roll. Wow. So the next is going to be a Century Carapace. Okay. So I will surge, or wait. You already it? surged. I already surged. Okay. And we are looking at an empty deck. Yeah. Which means the trap is like right there. Yeah. So somebody's going to take a trap hit. Well, we can also try with. We can send Death Star in. Oh, if he takes all the cards, you have to reshuffle the discard in. Yeah. Do it. He'll have to dash up though. Yeah. So Death Star dashes. How far can he move? Uh, five. Okay. He's fine. He's going to move. I'm moving you here, because then if the ball comes up, it doesn't collide with you. Thank you. Okay, so I have... A lot of hits. Yeah. And anything but a one? I am actually going to search for free to beacon shield. Ah, because you're expecting in case the... Trap hits me. Yep. Oh, wow. Four I hits. missed two. You missed two? Two ones. Oh, shit. That may not get all the cards. Nope. Oh, fuck us. <sighs> oh, God. Seriously? Wow. The last card's the trap. Alrighty, then. Oh, and you've got three of those. Uh-huh. I wonder what you're rolling against. Yeah. What are, what are you trying to hit? I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll figure out when I'm done. You, you're, you're not just going to pick a century carapace? Mm-hmm. Wow. I think you hit. I wounded. Uh, I archive the card and gain one survival. Okay. Hey, the survival's nice. Yeah. Rinse repeat two more times? Uh, no. He has to do burrow. Oh. Yeah, that's the kind of the shitty part. A uh, monster dives into the ground. Select a random survivor. Wow. Wow. Uh, that is going to be Death Star. Ah, so shit. he has to spend four survival or take some terrible shit. Yep. So he spends four survival, and then it places him on top of me. And knock back five. I am not knocked down because I do not suffer collision from... Eh, but it cancels monster. your attack. But it does cancel my attack. And unfortunately, you know the last card's a trap card, which we want you to do. Yes. What's the trap card? Survivors are doomed. Full move directly towards the attacker. Uh, you get slammed inside and gain the smell world. That sounds... Oh, yeah, we don't want that. No. So we want Death Star to try to handle that. Yes. And unfortunately, you already used your dash. And my surge. Yep. So. Awesome. I do We're done. Yeah. Okay, he does not have his ball. <laughs> yeah. 
century carapaces all the way down. Rainbow Beetle. Oh, God, no. When this comes into play, all non-blind survivors are knocked down. I'm blind. Or no, wait, no, I'm not. How about Death Star? Uh, he's not blind. Um, when a survivor attacks the monster on a perfect hit, they lose a survival and suffer three brain damage. Wow. So we're going to burn through survival like water. Yep. Now it's well, our... no, it's fine, because uh, Death Star uh, suffers, uh, like, has that uh, thing. So he gains survival and loses survival. It's perfect. So stand up, courtesy of Fist and Tooth Mastery. Okay. And now Death Star gets to attack him. I think he should surge. No, it doesn't matter, actually. I, I, it's not, doesn't make any sense to. So uh, go ahead and hoof me up on him. Oh, I was going to surge to get your shield up. It doesn't matter, because this doesn't, isn't going to help me. Oh, right, okay. Help me. I didn't realize that the trap was useless. Now, understand that when I do this, if I cancel the trap, I get no hits. Why? Because I can't draw anything else from the hit location deck. No, you always draw up your full cards for your hits. So you're going to shuffle up the hit location deck to draw more. Uh, uh, I don't know whether or not it works that way. That was that was one of the things we did before. If we're wrong on this... I will spend a minute checking real quick. See whether or not... Yeah, because you've got to be able to run into that anyways, even without this ability. We're hitting all kinds of weird shit, mm -hmm. including a Dung Beetle Knight. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he's hitting us more than he's than we're hitting it. Oh God, I'm just thinking. I can't wait for the new Dragon Ball Super tonight. Yeah. That we've been loving that. I don't know why we've so gotten into Dragon Ball. It's been amazing. You've been getting into Dragon Ball. Hey, you've been watching it and getting. You've been actually watching it. Uh. Oh, you know, maybe I'm supposed to cancel all the attacks when I draw a trap. Oh. Yeah, because there was never anything that you couldn't draw more hit locations. So, we rebuild the hit location deck. Now, assume you normally just hit the trap and then have to reshuffle again anyway, so it doesn't matter. But in your case, it's different. So you get that, and four more. Oh... Uh, so that is one perfect hit, so I do not lose any survival. You got a perfect hit because of 9 and a 10? No, it reshuffles the entire deck, so it doesn't matter. Like, it still would not do the trap. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you get a perfect on a 9 and 10? Yes. Okay. I'm timeless eye. Oh, right. So I suffer 3 brain damage, I think? Yep. And lose a survival? No. But gain a survival? Yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? Did you pick the burrow <laughs> into the hit location. Oopsie. Okay, so now you draw four more. to cancel the trap. You need a 6 plus, and we don't have any rerolls. Yay! So now that gets shuffled back in. Yes. Wow. Here, I'll take care of that. You just don't want to... Oh god, this hit location deck is getting small, man. I know. And we still have a lot of wounds. Okay. Ground pound, ground pound, whatever. In any case, I'm... Uh, oh, I can't... Uh, I'm actually not behind him, so I can't do sharp. Uh, seven, so I will succeed. And um, you get to pick. Now, don't forget, we do have the permanent injury already on him, but I don't think it affects those. No. It would have been really nice if we'd been able to crit on Filthy Resin Sword, but I'm not trusting that. Yeah. Alright, I will Filthy Resin Sword, and that wounds him. Okay. By the way, one of the big updates we're doing in our next overlay is we will have an AI deck counter, or hit point counter for the enemy, so you know how many uh, uh, wounds we need left to do to win. I'm going to go after the iridescent arm next. 
that is enough to wound. The monster stumbles backwards. It suffers knockback three directly away from the attacker, and then it performs ground pound. So, uh, one, two, three, knocks your guy back five. Two, three, four, five. And that's going to move up one. So, yeah, at least one. So we knew that would happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you're done. Okay. What's our hit location? Country Carapace. Okay. So we need to get that dung ball away from him. Mm-hmm. And I ain't doing shit. You, he's already dashed? Uh... I don't think he's dashed or surged. I thought... Wasn't he over there? No, he was, um... Yeah, he hasn't dashed or surged, technically. So I'm gonna try to knock the dung ball away. Okay. So I'm going to, I have to, I have four movement, nice. I'm going to move up to here, and... Yay, four movement! Yes, and I'm going to knock the dung ball for four. Okay, it runs into this. Which, which breaks that. Which breaks it. Yeah, we had covered that before. Okay, now I'm going to surge, and I have a reach weapon, so I can attack him from here. Okay. That is a hit. And I rolled the wrong die. God, I love my accuracy. Mm. <laughs> and now trying to wound. And that's a crit, technically. But um, I gain a survival. And he does burrow. Okay. I have a six and a seven. I have an eight. Okay, so the six is going to be Death Star, unfortunately. So he comes up underneath Death Star, costing him four more survival, putting Death Star to one survival. Okay. Um... Oh, it says ignore the trap. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, so, um... Alright, so now... Oh, Death Star... Oh yeah, he still could do it. It's risky, but... Oh, you can still dash up and hit, yeah. I can dash up, and then since I can surge for free. Okay, flip your hit location. Oh. Okay, have fun with that. <laughs> if there's a time to do it... Five hits. Okay, roll for that trap. Come on! Yeah, I've been doing too well on this. <laughs> Don't say that! Ten! Oh, thank God. And I'm not shuffling. Because obviously I suck at that. <laughs> now, now he sucks at it. Though we were saying for the next game, I may be sitting there. Yeah. Ooh. Gonna have fun, man. It's gonna be great. You get to take all of this shit. God help me. Uh-huh. Oh, God. I get to take all the shit for this. Okay. Alrighty then, so I do get to... Pick a location. Pick a location after I attempt to wound. So... You wound? I will wound. So, oh wait, I had to discard this and draw a new hit location, which shouldn't have been lost, but whatever. Yep. Alright, so, um... Unfortunately, it wasn't a crit. Yeah, so I am going to wound his iridescent leg. Okay. We do have to roll the ball. Oh, wait. You should have picked a location before. No. Oh. Oh, that's the ball? I have to roll the ball. To move it? Yes. Up one more. And then angled. There we go. Oh, it ends up next to him? It does end up next to him. There's no way. Oh, shit. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, I will attack his filthy resin sword. Okay. Get a crit, get a crit. Nope, but get a wound. A crit. Wound. <laughs> yes, chant for no traps. Alright, so if the ball has three spaces grabbed and smashed into the ball, place the attacker, collide with it, suffer five damage to blah blah blah. Not the sentry carapace. Sounds good. You have courage, right? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so attempt to wound. Wound. Wounded. So now archive this card and gain plus one survival. Nice. And monster is level three, so perform burrow. Oh shit. What? Oh, that was bad. Okay. Well, in any case, right now. Uh, so I rolled two nines. Random survivor, it's burrow. Oh, right. Two. So it's you. So spend four survival or take a severe body injury. Knock me back five. And now, and down. You people. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, now, the last thing we could do... He has a shield, though, right? Who? The person who was just knocked down? Yes. You are specialized, which means you are not knocked down, actually. Oh, nice. Um, last thing we could do is your guy could knock himself down to stand up your other one with an encourage, and then your other one can try to get the dung ball away. No way. No way, man. Really? Tester only has one survival left. Okay, yeah, I save it. Yeah. That's... So we're going to take a dung ball hit. Yeah. Okay. That sucks, but, you know, sometimes, like, I... Yeah. Yeah. Because he has to roll... We yeah. have enough for it to work, too. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we are going to power forward. Oof. For the stinky survivor, that is going to be him, actually. Okay. Uh, turn to face target and perform baller. Okay, so this ends up here, but nothing else happens because... No, no one's one right around him? Move the ball 2d10 spaces through the target. Oh, so it'll make it to him? And ten spaces. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's said to keep going. Yeah. I guess there. Uh one more. Oh no, you're right. Alright, so he does suffer five damage to three hit locations. That's you? Don't... Oh wait, I, I just moved it to you. Body body arms. Well, I'm rolling twice on the body. Ouch. And on the and once on the arms. Oh. Oh, that's a bad day. Mm -hmm. That oh, that's gonna hurt. By the way, thank you to the people watching on YouTube as well. This is our first time streaming there. You're welcome to chat. We have the overlay set up to also show you. Body uh collapsed lung, negative one movement token. And one bleed. Let's make it two bleeds. Next on the body. Three. Into bleed. This is probably going to kill me. Ouch. Last but not least. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it did kill me. Any uh, bonuses for people for that killing you? Oh, wait. No, actually, I can stop this. You have I unbreakable. Am unbreakable. Okay, so this, this one you happen. stopped. I cancel the instant death. Woohoo! I gain a disorder, though. Okay. Apparently. Yes. Wow. Mm. That's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. You survive. And now he has to do a new AI card. Yeah. Now the AI card happens. Oh, wait. No, he has to move towards the ball. So he has a movement of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he gets right next to it, damn it. Damn it. And he's so in that's a... a bad spot for it, too. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because the ball's in the corner. Mm -hmm. We can't, well, we can knock it away still. You knock it down the, the path, but it's going to take one extra. So for your disorder today, you acquire weak spot. Roll die. Weak spot body. Okay. You also gained a lot of evasion. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you did. All right, closest stinky threat. Yeah, this is pretty hard. We're liking it. So, uh... That's yeah, me. That's you. Hi! So, you have a defensive opportunity. If you do not, then you suffer bash and three... Uh, star plus three damage to the leg's location, and then he is going to basic action you. Defensive opportunity. Uh... What do you mean by that? Like, in other words, you can run. Like, if you want to run, you can run, though that would only prevent the bash and 
uh, star plus three, six damage to the legs location. So you can take, you're going to take the basic attack no matter what. Okay. Which is bad. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to surge for my feather shield. Okay. And going to save the other one for a dodge. Okay. So you are going to take a bash and six damage. That just starts. To the lake's location. Okay. That puts me to heavy, so I get knocked down. Okay. Then he attacks you with his damn sword. And I have two evasion. Okay. Uh, Eridonis is knocked down, so probably can't use the fighting art. It's hard to say. Frozen star. Um, no, you can use that. Okay. Then we will use that. Okay, so that's, uh... Six. Days. No, but, uh, so that's four plus evasion total. So that puts him at six plus. Ooh, it's a two plus normal? Yeah. Ah, fuck me. Yeah. Roll low! Roll low! That's not low! Uh, two. So he hits you four times. Yep. Uh, three waists and a uh, arms. Ouch! For how much damage each? Uh, eight. Eight? Yes. Eight? Yes. Okay, I will take the three waists. I'm dodging the arms. And what about your block? Oh, and I block one of the waists. Okay. So I roll twice on that. You have one bleed. One more bleed. Oh, I get one more bleed. Okay, so that puts me up to three total right now. Or no, four. Shit. And now start rolling on the chart. I have to roll twice and not gain a bleed. Yeah, and you cannot not gain a bleed, actually. And I'm it's negative impossible. two, right? Yes. That is why it is impossible for you not to gain a bleed. I just died. You died. I'm very good at just dying. Okay. Okay, so, so pop, then you did. pop me off the board. So then you did. <laughs> yes. So how many AI cards does he have left? Three, six AI cards. So you have to deal seven wounds with your two characters. <laughs> he has Katamari of murder. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, so this is fine. You stand up. Everything's fine. We're all fine. Oh, you're dead, so I can't even use the fucking wisdom potion. So now I'm fighting blind. Yes, you are. So do you want to knock away the dung ball before you do anything else, or...? My chances of not going with a dung ball are shit, man. Well, you get two well, tries, because well, you can dash and then... No, you well, can't dash, can you? I mean, Eridonis can dash, but... Then you're almost guaranteed to knock it away. No, I'm not. Move up, hit it once, dash I up, hit again. I have to hit it three times. I have to hit it for three spaces total. Yeah, so. so move up, hit it once, dash up, hit it a second time if you have to. Yes. So you just need to get a uh, three plus on one of the die rolls. Yeah, I guess... Or you can try to kill him quickly. Yeah. I mean, most of the most of the hit location cards, if you're going to do that, I'd just send in Death Star and save Eridanus. For if Death Star's two attacks don't do it, then you have Eridanus to fall back to possibly get, like, a killing blow or to knock the dung ball away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move Death Star in. So that means I do have to dash, which means it's going to kind of suck. Cause... Yep. Oh, you don't have uh, any survival left? Nope. Unless you get lucky in game. And one. I'm going to start rolling on the brain chart, too. Yeah, of course. Five uh, hits. One perfect hit, so I do have to roll on the brain chart. Oh, right. Perfect hits cause you three? Oh, right. I'm dead. <laughs> okay, I think that's game. Yeah. But... Go in and attack with the other character. Okay. Okay. So, hazmat shield. Roll four dice. Hit on a what? Uh, anything. Okay. Anything but ones. Four hits. Take your three insanity. Three insanity? Don't you lose three insanity to do the same trait? No. Oh. It's like, this oh, cause you're... perfect hits. Oh, it's that's... only on perfect hits. Oh, I misunderstood. Yes. Alrighty then. Um... Mm. 
could get lucky and draw a mortal. Why no except darkness? I don't get why. Hmm? We didn't choose except yeah. darkness. Oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't. Drawing both the legendary cards didn't help. No, no, no it does not. No, that did not help. No, at all. putting out both legendaries, that's a bad day. That that's making a level three fight like a level four. <laughs> oh, hello Luke. Thank you for joining. I will use the iridescent arm. I crit on a nine or a ten and I wound on a uh, fifteen. I wound on a three. Sweet. Oh, come on. I didn't wound, though, so nothing happens. Um, I will do the iridescent back, then. That's a wound? That is a wound. So, uh, I get knocked back seven. Oh. Are you, would you be knocked down? No. Okay. Okay. That's it. <laughs> So power forward, he produces, performs baller, and then, oh wait, yeah, move the ball 2d10, spaces through the target, that is definitely going through me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And this is going to kill me, I think, so that's that, I lose a survival, because it's a loaded ball, and then... Uh, oh, I didn't actually... I don't have to roll on the waist. I just oh. have to roll twice on the body. How That's many bleeds do you have? Uh, four. Oh. Yeah. So you had a bad day. This is not happening. No. Uh, seven. Two bleeding tokens. I'm dead. You're dead. We tried. It doesn't make you immune. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes it less likely. Yes. Yes. Significantly less likely. Okay. Okay. Well, that is it. Well, alas, that did not go so well. Nope, that did not go great. But it was an interesting fight. I'm glad we did it. Yeah. I think we could do level twos if we had a good party. Yeah, well, we've got a really badass party, so there is that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what do you think that we could have done better? Like, crits would definitely have helped. If we could crit him down, then that would have been hugely helpful. So one of the first things is having um, Grumpy get hit with the negative one speed on the way in from the hunt really castrated us, because he's our crit master. Mm -hmm. uh, or him and Chicago are. Okay. So I think the two biggest things would be if you definitely need, you can't have a one speed character. Because he's got too many AI cards, especially if it's a crit character. So I would have probably dealt an extra four wounds mm -hmm. just from that, which would have put us almost to him being dead. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing is uh, the sheer damage output at the three star or is just insane. Um, so Chicago Bear with just two armor on each hit location. What we should have done, is, if he didn't have the stupid Twilight Sword, Take like the hazmat shield or, or something like the dragon's vestments or a shield at all. Because mm -hmm. the hazmat shield would have given him three to all armor locations. Also, one of the things that we did suffer from was Burrow really killed us. Burrow is a level three card. Yeah. So we would not have had that. Yeah. Um, though that and the accuracy and evasion tokens, which we effectively took off of him, are the only. But those would have been negatives then. Yeah. Um, how many toughness would he have had at two? 14. That would so have been much easier. he's not going to be easy. No, he's not going to be easy, but that would have been much better. What's level 1's toughness? Uh, 12. And any other losses on abilities? Uh, he does not have heavy loads, so you do not lose one survival any time the ball hits you. Nice. And, of course, at level 1, like, he loses the speed and damage tokens. Okay, so, so and 12... And at 1, he doesn't have any of these damn legendary cards. So 12's harder to hit, but more achievable. Yeah. Yeah, that, I think, because we're planning to bring him in for our people of the Blooming Skull, because he has gear we can wear. Yeah. So I wanted to know if we could fight him for that, which I think we need to get some strength. We want probably at least a couple characters with three or four strength and decent weapons to fight him at level one. Yeah, one of the things is is that I definitely think that we're going to end up bringing in our really, really good characters when we fight him. Oh yeah, super dense, so don't bring stuff like Zambato. Yeah. Um... We won't have the Wisdom Potion. Yeah. Because that not that a uh, Dragon King? Oh, we don't need to worry about Super Dents with the People of the Bone because all oh, yeah. bone weapons lose Frail. Yes. That actually is really interesting because his bone 
like uh, several of these locations, like the Century Carapace, mm -hmm. gain plus 2d10 strength when attempting to wound this location with a club shield or pickaxe, and if you attacked with a pickaxe, gain an additional 3 survival when you wound. So we could bring a character with pickaxe to farm. Yeah, nice. well, it basically can cancel out Burrow completely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, one of the benefits is we could calcify his end. Oh, Luke, these are the same characters. We're doing one-off fights. So what we're doing is we're taking our finale characters, and we're using them to fight really hard mobs just to practice and see what they're like. Yeah. I mean, honestly, part of it is... So, we got this legendary card, uh, Swordmaster. Yeah, that was... we kept trying to crit off, but just couldn't. Yeah, if I'd gotten it. lucky on that one hit, that would have helped a lot. Yeah, because, see, like, the basic action mm -hmm. is... So, it's the same speed, but the accuracy is slightly worse, and the damage is too less. That and it doesn't have the bleed after effect, and it doesn't have the severe injury roll. <laughs> okay. Effect. So, so with that, we would have been much better. We would have had a lot better luck if we hadn't had Swordmaster in play. Yeah, if I had, well that, well, that goes back to, once again, if I didn't have the negative one speed, I would have been better off for hitting towards that as well. Yeah, I think we also might get some benefit from the, if we do end up, like, allowing ourselves to use the Flower Knight gear, yeah. we get some options for luck. Oh, yes. I think. Oh, Wow. Well, don't forget, we can also eat the skulls for one to all stats. Yeah. What's you that one? You cannot dodge. Oh. <laughs> you, this is one of the special things that you can only get if you do People of the Bloom. Oh, but it's a, uh, it's a plus one permanent devastating. Yeah, so the thing is, is that if we just did People of the, uh, if we did People of the Skull and People of the Bloom together, mm -hmm. and actually just use the rules together we actually couldn't use any of the flower knight gear no no but what i'm planning to say is one of the one of the rule differentiations is you can wear any flower knight stuff yeah so basically you we have the skull limitations with the exception of flower knight stuff yeah so that gives us a little bit more flexibility yeah so yeah we'll see how it works in any case unfortunately yes we were not successful alas so yeah sad <laughs> i'm not that surprised but Oh, wow, he only has 11 resource guards. Wow. Oh, so you can get his easily. Well, yeah, and the thing is, his uh, the rewards from the fight, at uh, level 3, you get 8 Dung Beetle Knight resources. Wow. Yeah. Though there weren't crit locations to really get extra resources. Oh, there were. Oh, there were? We just yeah, weren't Yeah, we were just them. weren't critting them. Gain one random beetle. Okay. Gain this specific resource. Um, gain one random... Uh, plus random. That's a rare gear. Okay. So yeah, four four locations. Okay, so uh, we're done with Kingdom Death for today. Uh, the name theme. No, we have not. We will be looking for a name theme for People of the Flowering Skull. Yeah. So uh, uh, first first uh, benefits on naming will be given to anybody on our Patreon. So uh, please feel free to reply to any of our recent videos on Patreon with the naming convention. But other than that, uh, yeah, we'll we'll be mostly covering that in about three weeks when we hop into that. Yeah. So next week we will be doing a Lonely Tree Level Three, same characters, but we're going to remove some of the permanent in injuries we just gained. Um, following that, we're still looking for our last fight of a one-off fight and then three weeks from now we are doing people of the flowering skull first match so if you have any ideas for what to do with people of the flowering skull that we might not have thought of monsters we should add gear we should be targeting stuff like that or any cool stuff we could do with stats or abilities or anything like that we'd love to hear it um beyond that uh, if you would like to see us play pathfinder adventure card game mummy's mask for the first time in a while we will be uh kicking that off or we may be uh, we have to finally decide, but we'll stick around and chat about that for a couple minutes and see what we're doing. Uh, otherwise, Kingdom Death is done for today. Thank you very much for joining. Yep. Thanks, guys. Okay, so I've got recording stopped. Uh, Rico was up for doing Pathfinder, but I don't know if you are. Um, we can do Pathfinder. We can do Pathfinder? Okay, yeah. so we'll be cleaning up for about five to ten minutes, and then we'll be hopping right into a Pathfinder Adventure card game. Oh, the tokens. The tokens. The tokens. All the tokens. Is Pathfinder the upper right icon for me? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah.
Though, yeah, I have to fix those. I knew that. Oh, We haven't played in a while, and I redid our camera hookups. Mm-hmm. Basic. Advanced. Legendaries. Oh, man, that was brutal. Oh. Oh, that's bad. I accidentally removed something I shouldn't have. Oops. Um, I will have to come back over here. Copy. Oh, where's that? Web page. Paste. In. Okay, so what's the, that's the 2CC. Hey, thank you for joining, Sage. Hope you will uh, follow, subscribe, all that good fun stuff. This is his specials deck. A what? This is his specials. Oh, wow. That, that's his special cards. <laughs> Go. Hand me your horn when you get a chance. My what? Horn. Oh, yes. There you go. Please add, uh, give me any fighting arcs. Disorders related. Armor, specialization, fighting arcs, disorders. Uh, specialization. Oh, we're gonna have, we're gonna have to Secret divide up all of these. Art and armor. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Yes. I have to say, I'm really looking forward to getting uh, the new expansion content. Yeah. No, I mean we really haven't dug deep into a lot of the expansion stuff. Yeah, we haven't. We're we've been getting there slow but sure. Yeah, I mean the problem is so much of it is so hard. Yeah. Honestly speaking. You're you're almost that's why I like what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Gear. Um, it's giving us a chance to experiment with it. One thing I've been thinking about with people the flowery night, I almost want to put the Slenderman in okay. as our nemesis. Okay. Is that something that you think might work? Possibly. Cool. Uh so many tokens. Yep. We got all the tokens. Yes, yes we do. Literally, we have all the tokens. Yeah. They kind of come with the game. So bandages would have helped a bit. You think so? Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, he died from bleeding. I mean, it wouldn't have saved our, our butts, I think, but well, no. they would have helped. That's a good point. Oh... That is a pretty cool model. Yeah, it is. I'm really happy we got that built, too. Yeah, I actually kind of find it funny. So, um, he's actually addicted to the phoenix, basically. The he's, dung beetle knight? He's what? He's addicted to the phoenix, basically. In what regard? He's been chasing the phoenix for its droppings. Oh, really? Yeah, and then he uh, ends up going into, um, he ends up, when the phoenix moves, it moves into the flower knight's um, domain. And So he starts pretending to be a knight. Huh. To basically not get attacked by the flower knight. That's interesting. Yeah. Which explains why in the Flower Knight's introduction, they reference the uh, resin dung ball. Interesting. Really dislike that YouTube's having, pro or Twitch is having problems with updating titles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just doesn't want to update titles now. Okay. 
going to relocate to your side and finish updating our screen. Uh, what's up? The uh, dice thing. Dice bag. It's behind the curtain. Sorry for uh, the delay in setting this up. We weren't sure if we were going to be doing this one today. So you get to watch some of the on screen magic. It's an opportunity, man. You gotta sell it. Yes, you get to watch all the fancy stuff that I have to do all the time just to make this work. Okay, I think we're mostly set up. Yep. Can you move your fingers under your camera? Okay, now let me make sure the last one's aligned properly. Uh, no, it's upside down. <laughs> Lol. Little details that matter. Okay, now let me make sure it's readable. Okay, I need to make those a little bit bigger. This on yours right by the tape.
And last but not least. Okay. I go grab Rico. Okay. Uh, could you put my trays back if you have a sec? Your trays? Oh, yes. Bad idea. What? My shoulder. Oh, right. Sorry. No, it's no problem. I didn't realize it until after I'd picked it up. And then, like, stubborn person I am. You're like, oh, well, I'll keep doing it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do for dinner? Hell if I know, man. Could I have a taste for BJ's, but I'd be open to grabbing a Joe. Uh, sure. It sounds fine to me. I kind of want one of their pizzas. Okay. Okay, so, these are our five locations. Blessing deck. Oh, Adventure complete the scenarios scenario. in this order. Yeah, we're on Shadow of the Sphinx. Oh, right. Okay. So, yes, it is, I checked, it is the right one. Okay, cool. So, we got Glass Pavilion. We've got Silver Forge. Oh wait, why am I? Did we? I think we pre-shuffled these. Uh, probably. Well, why don't you shuffle them up as I lay out, just to be safe. Um, we have Windswept Chasm. We've got Crypt. And last but not least, a Carava or no, Rune Temple. Temple. No, we don't have eight players. Or six, six players. Something like that. Wow, you're doing great. Oh, I'm doing fine. You sure you're up for this, man? What could go wrong? Uh-huh. Oh, that's, that's, some, that's some famous last words right there. Yeah, no shit. How many times have I said that in Kingdom Death? Oh, God. Man, that Dung Beetle Knight was brutal. Oh, yeah. That was definitely a hard fight. That you do have to deal with Baller even on the lowest lower levels. Yeah, but I think we can generally stay away. He's definitely one, though, where you need dash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a Phoenix style fight actually. Like he's basically the same level as the Phoenix. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's why he's so difficult. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so these are my cards. Uh, my hand size is six. As I try to remember how to play the damn game. That's a lower res than I remember the. No, game. I think I forgot to fix something. I hope it didn't impact the main video too much. Oh shoot, yeah. Dice. Oh right. our own dice. It's an amazing concept. Oh, so I don't think we have anything else left to set up. Oh wait, we need to have that on screen. 
That's what I forgot. Uh, I left, so the cutoff for the green screen is the tape on the bottom, but it goes almost all the way to the top for rolling dice. Wow, those show up really nice. I don't think we had all the 4K stuff working the last time we played this. Yeah, it might not have been. Yeah, because the dice are looking really fantastic on there. Well... <laughs> oh. My green dice. Yeah, I don't think those are really flying. No, I don't think I should be using those. Okay, so I will... Oh yeah, I sh we should figure out where we're going first. And then I'll kick off stuff. Um, at the start of your turn, examine the top card. No effect when close. Wisdom or divine. That sounds like my kind of place. Yeah. So, what were our conditions? Yeah, what well, we got to do to win? Um, when you examine or encounter a card, you may recharge a weapon, an armor, or an ally to gain a skill. Gain the skill Stealth Dexterity plus two during any check against that card. When you defeat a Bane by three or more, examine the top card of your location deck. Otherwise, just win. All right. Okay, I will start the video and read off a whole ton of stuff. Hello, and welcome back to Forged by Geeks playing Mummy's Mask Pathfinder Card Game Adventure. Or Adventure Card Game or something like that. Adventure Card Game, I'm fairly sure. Yes. Uh, it's been a little while on this one back from vacation we're back from vacation and we're making progress so today we will be continuing uh adventure deck four it looks like um and out of six so we're actually pretty far into this now mm -hmm. and we're doing shadow of the sphinx which is halfway through number four so uh green screens for the win um in the sun-blasted sandscape, a massive faceless statue of a sphinx casts an eyeless gaze over the dunes, rumored to be a place where the cult of the forgotten pharaoh is headquartered. Scorpion-like, uh, your tabulous guard its, uh, its entrance. They are known to be quick and vicious. Defeat them quietly, or you may be quickly overwhelmed by their stings. So a bunch of scorpion type thingies. Which is why we have that dexterity stealth, stealth check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, know. you can see the scorpion a little bit better on that side. Um so, yeah, that uh when you examine or encounter a card, you may recharge a weapon and armor an ally to gain the skill stealth dexterity plus two during any check against that card. When you defeat a bane by three or more, examine the top card of your location deck. We've got our Blessings deck ready to go, and let's roll a roll D10 and see who's going. Explain the location turn. Oh, right. Sorry, it's been a little while. So we've got the Glass Pavilion. At the start of your turn, examine the top card of your location deck. Succeed on Wisdom or Divine with a difficulty of 9 to close. No effect when closing. Uh, the Silver Forge. You may discard a card to add 1D6 and the Fire Trait to your combat check. Summon and acquire an armor to close. Easiest closing location ever. Depends on the armor. Fair. Uh, and then when permanently closed, at the end of your turn, uh, oh, you have to acquire it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the end of your turn, you may recharge an armor from your discard pile. Yeah. Um, when swept chasm, all damage dealt to you is electricity damage. <laughs> that was an easy call, huh? Yeah, well, I got a... Reduce electricity by four. So Yeah, that helps a lot. Uh, when closing, discard your hand. Ooh. When Ooh. permanently closed, on closing, draw 1d4 minus one random cards from your discard pile. Hopefully you don't have a big discard pile. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. It's, yeah. 
you get cards out of your discard. It's a heal. So you, yeah, but yeah, that means but you if, don't want a huge discard oh, pile because it makes it hard to... So if I'm dumping your six good cards stuff, you've, and I've already got six cards in there, I might not get the stuff I want back. Good point. Uh, Crypt. The difficulty of checks against the Banes that have the cold or undead trait is increased by three plus... is increased by seven. Woo! Love it. Uh, succeed at a wisdom or divine check with a difficulty of eight Woo. to close. On closing, draw a blessing from the box. And last but not least, I can't read that far. Uh, Ruin Temple. When you play a card that has the divine trait, bury it. I am not going there. Yeah. Um, when closing, bury a blessing. When permanently closed. On closing, you may banish a card that has the cursed trait next to the deck of a character at this location or draw a blessing from the box. Okay, let's see who's going first. Oh, we roll. Uh, ten. I got a ten. One. So yeah. I'm out. Ten again. Four. Rico's got it. And you have the Blessing of Osiris. Oh, yeah. Spell. Elemental Skin. Int Arcane Wisdom Divine of Twelve to Acquire. Not sounding good. Nope. That would be a good one to get. Alright, so I'm going to reveal my Blessing of Wajit. Reveal this card to add 1d4 to your check to acquire a boon. Do you want to discard it to get more? No. Okay. For a spell. Oh, fair. I would do what that. What spell? Oh, uh, nice yeah, it's not that good. But it's a 4 that we could use to trade in later. Exactly. That's the biggest thing. So I got a d8 and d4. Four to one. Plus one. Oh. No. Total of eight. Oh, and you need a ten. Oh, well. Twelve, I believe. Yeah. So that was four short. Okay. Would you like to continue? No. Okay. Would you like to refresh any of your hand? No. <laughs> okay, that was easy. My turn. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 And I have a Blessing of the Ankh. And I will be going up against a Fiery Glare. And it looks kind of, because the way the... Oh, yes. The, kinda looks oh, I'm color. actually accidentally green screening out black a bit. Oops, that looks like a spell, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Okay. And it's a basic that I can get rid of if I acquire. That's the biggest thing. So I need Divine 8. Is that even possible for me to miss? D10 plus 6. Yes, it is possible. That is completely cocked. Jesus, though, it looks one on the screen. Mm. Yeah, it's a one. I missed it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't draw cards. Oh my god. Oh. Um, I, we just got done with Kingdom Death. Mm -hmm. I blame it on that. I wouldn't have done anything, but... Wow. Okay. Um, that's not a basic, is it? No. You know, I'll discard a Blessing of the Ancients to continue. And I get a Royal Naga. Have anything to worry about here? Oh, at the end, start of your turn, examine the top card. Oh, so you would have examined the Fury Glare. Yeah, instead of, but not a big deal. Um, you may succeed at a Stealth 8 check to evade. Eh. For combat check, randomly choose a card that you can play that is a weapon or has the attack trait and play it. That would be, um, that. Wow. That's literally all you got. Okay. What so, does evading do? Uh, I don't remember. I think it just goes back in the deck. Randomly, right? Yeah. So, Divine Skill plus 3d6. If I would fail this check, I can evade instead. So I have 3d6 plus 6. Shuffle it back into the deck. To beat a 16. So I need 10 on 3d6. Ooh. That is 11. 
So I passed the first combat check. Um, after playing this card, if you do not have either Arcane Divide, banish it. Otherwise, try to keep it. I have failed to keep it. So I discard it. Now I have to do another combat check. Hmm. Um, my base attack would be a strength check. So that's a d6. Um, hmm. I can give myself a die and the fire trait. Okay, that would be good. So I'll give myself a die, so I get another d6. I'm using the Blessing of Ra, which also gives me the fire trait, which now means... Oh, I need to play a card that has fire and attack to get that. Shit. Okay, so that doesn't... It just give me another die. Yeah, I'm not sure I can actually do the second attack on this. Hmm. What triggers the uh, deck stealth check? The scenario? Oh, the scenario? Anytime. You have when to you do ex what? I have to recharge an armor, a weapon, or an ally. And I get stealth dex plus two. So that would be a d4 plus 2 to be an 8. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is about to be a bad day. Uh, how much do you need total? I need 16. And right now the, my cap is 12. I would almost need two more dice to have any chance. Honestly okay. speaking, which isn't good. No. That's pretty much not going to happen. Okay, so I think I'm about to suck this. Okay, so before I do my next attack, can I cure myself? No. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. What kind of damage is it? Uh, combat. Yeah, so I'm you're not going to totally take it in the face. Yeah, I'm going to use my armor. Okay, so I will keep the Blessing of Raw. I will use that to suck, bury that to suck all 16 damage. Are you proficient with Void Armors? I should be. Discard. Yes. Oh, it's discard? Oh. Nice. Useful. Oh, and the Naga goes back in. Yes. And I am done. You're okay. up. Probably ought to reset your thing. Yeah, I will. Actually, draw cards. Blessing of Phrasma. Uh, Blessing of the Ancients. Divine 3. When you play a card that has Divine, bury it. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a d4, I think. Hm. A d4 and you need a 3. Yep. Yeah, nothing for you. Yeah, I could give you a Blessing of Logic, but I don't think it's worth it for that one. I don't think it's worth it. I'm not even really going to spend... Uh, hmm. So if I spend anything else, then I bury. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'd just go the D4. Oh. Two! Nope. Say trombone. Doesn't and go away permanently. I will discard my blessing of the elements to investigate. Woohoo! Is that divine? No. Okay. Okay. Hearth elemental, elemental fire. Check to acquire. C below. You may automatically acquire this card if you do. You are dealt one d six plus one fire damage. Recharge this card to draw a weapon or armor from your discard pile. So literally, you have to take one d six fire damage. <laughs> you were not getting the card. Well, that's poopy. I mm, might be worth doing it. I honestly don't love my hand. Okay, much. then. That's a good time. I can always heal you, too. Yeah. So, four damage. So. Woohoo! Acquired. Uh, I could also recharge it to draw a weapon or armor from my discard pile. Oh, is there one you want? I could get my flask or back. Yeah, do that. Yeah, so I recharge the hearth elemental. It does not have divine. Get my flask or back. 
And then, no, I can't continue because, of course, you know. I need a blessing. And you get a blessing of ancients. And I get a blessing of the elements. Oh. So it's D12. Damn. And D4. Just because? Yeah. And do you have any pluses? Plus two. You should have this. No. Wait, what? Six, one plus two is oh yeah. Never mind, it's six. Yes. <laughs> Alright, I will discard this to explore my location. Okay. Area. Hungry fog. Obstacle. Damn, that sucks. It's not a trap. Magic acid. Wisdom perception 10. It's immune to acid electricity traits. When you encounter this card, you may succeed at dex or stealth ten check to evade it. Uh, wisdom perception. And yeah, D8 plus three. Ooh, why not? Fix the green screen a bit. Okay. Six plus. Did I say? I don't remember, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, add my perception skill. But it requires perception. That's poopy. No, you don't have perception? <laughs> no, I do have perception. But mm -hmm. I'm using perception skill to actually do it. Or if I use my wisdom, I can add perception on top of it. Ah! There we go. There you go. It is defeated. Is it basic one or two? It's a three. It's a three. Okay. I'm done. You're done? Yep. Okay. Oh, I get a Blessing of the Scroll. And a Flame Staff. Divine Four. I cannot fail this. Say that now. No, a two. Got it. It's only a four. Okay. Um, it is useful for you. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it is. Fire and attack. Mm -hmm. Um... But I wouldn't want to keep it permanently, but... Yeah, but it's useful temporarily, at least. Is the top top fi uh, card of the Blessings discard pile a basic or fire? No. Okay. Recharge this card to explore your location. Oh, uh, okay. We've only... Did you defeat that Bane by three or more? No. Good. Okay. Okay. And here to die with mine when I... Oh, I never and, defeated it. And I haven't done any bands, so... Shrieking Plant. <laughs> I did not examine. Um, <laughs> wisdom, Stealth, Perception, Survival, 8. Um, I can do Wisdom... Survival, D8, plus 3. It is not your disable mechanism, right? Um... This is not a disable check. This okay. is a check to defeat. Okay. Uh, does it have construct, lock, or trap? No. Okay. Does it have... Nope, that's it. Okay. So... And... Does it... And it does have the fire trait? No. Any non-strength combat check? This does not count as a combat check. Shit. All these tools. Yes. Can't use any of them. Pretty much. And I don't think we have any blessings to go around, do I we? I can't help you with anything. That's yes, same here. Okay, I'm going to discard my blessing of the raw to add a die and the fire trait. So 2d8 and I plus 3 and I need to be an 8. 
10, 11, 12, 13. I beat it. I exceed by, by three. three. Yep. Um, so I examine the next card. But this is defeated and destroyed. Because it's low enough level. So I examine the next one. It is not a trigger. It's the fucking Royal Naga again. Okay. Which I don't really have enough to handle, so now I'm going to cure myself. Two. And I keep it. So it's free Or wait. Yes, barely keep it. I need a two or higher. So I get two of these cards back. Oh, that's not too bad. I only had four. Three, four. four. Okay. I would have liked to have gotten them all, but... Okay, so those will get shuffled in. Ah, the two I wanted. Nice. And then that'll go on the bottom. And I'm done. Listen to the elements. Shock toad. <laughs> oh, those are nasty in uh, Monster Hunter. Yeah. They're useful, but most often you accidentally set them off and hit yourself. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your decks or range still plus a lot. Plus bitty. Plus d6. And oh my, I have plus five. I literally can't fail this check, and I am actually going to exceed it by too freaking much. Okay, so uh, examine the top card of your location deck. Keep Could, wait, oh, wait, she Jesus, hasn't defeated dude. it yet. Oh, I thought so, she did. No. Okay. I will automatically defeat it, but there are other options that I can take dude. to try to, like, reduce the... Minimize it. Ah. Uh. So, not use your weapon? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could reveal the Deliquescent Gloves to add the Acid Trait to a melee check. Ah. At which point, um... Oh, wait. Before you act, the Shock Toad deals one electricity damage to each character at your location. I have no way of reducing that damage. <laughs> so I will discard the Sandstorm Dust. Okay. What's um, our uh, curse deck? What's our modifier for the curses? Um, Scourge Eye is a D8. Uh, if you take poison uh, of at least one, Curse of Daybane. I'm going to take the risk and just take the examine. So yeah, I defeat it. It is destroyed and out of the game because it was a basic. Yeah, let's go and do that. Shield cloak. Okay. So you can just leave that face up. Yep. All right. So I can, I could Encounter. explore using the Mumia smuggler, but I'm kind of reluctant to do that right now. Wait a minute. But I thought when you examine, you have the option to encounter. No, this is only saying. examine. It does not say examine and encounter or option to. Examine yeah. is always just examine by default. Yeah. Uh, so, it is your turn. Blessing of the Elements. Armored Guilt. <laughs> Trying to acquire that. That that Blessing of Watch has proven useful for you. Yeah. Yeah, if I can get it out. Yeah. Alright. You got yourself a kilt. I acquired it. Discard it. Okay. And I'm done. You're done? Okay. Blessing of the cat. Uh, Did you want to move? move? Oh. I'm thinking I may relocate. Based on... Let's see. Um... Does this monster invoke the acid, cold, electricity, elemental, fire, or poison? No. But you said invoke. Uh, if it's a check that invokes, as long as you manage No, the monster has to invoke. Okay. Then no. Then no. Oh, wait, a check that invokes, yes. Yes. Um, but I don't have another card to do the second attack is the problem. Okay. Um, ooh. Oh, wait, that's acquire an ally. Shit. Okay, where else can I go? Um, oh, I would, yeah, I would have examined, so I know he's there. Um, okay, add one d six in the fire trait to your combat check. That sounds good. Okay, silver forge. A shocking shimitar plus two. Not ranged. 
black thing. Boo. <laughs> Strength melee 11. I don't think I'm getting this. I have a D6 and a D4. So, don't care. That's an 8. I don't get it. Okay, I'm going to discard Blessing of Ancients to keep going. A Sasselaku Combat 9. It's immune to cold and fire. That sucks for you. Mm -hmm. But it invokes cold. So I can use Elemental Mastery. Um, before your act, each character at your location must succeed at a Wisdom 6 or, disc or recharge 1d4. So I have a d8 plus 1 for a Wisdom 6. Hey, I got it. That's unusual for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if the result of the check to defeat is greater than 15 after you act, each character is dealt 1d4 cold. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, Elemental Mastery. So uh, discard this card to add a d10 to a uh, check by a character at your location. Defeat a monster that invokes acid, cold, electricity, elemental, fire, yada, yada, yada. And then I'll be doing that with a base strength check. So I have a d10 and a d6 to beat a 9. You can't exceed 15, otherwise you get damaged. Yes. Not worry about exceeding and, 15. And you can't exceed 13, otherwise you're going to examine. Or exceed 12. Okay. 12 or higher, I examine. F uh, 15 or higher, I take a damage and examine. But I need 9 on 2 dice to hit. 14. So, you don't trigger the damage. He's gone forever. This is, let's see if I recharge. I do succeed at recharging. Uh, but I do examine. And it is not a trigger. It is a brain ooze. And I think that's it for me. Let's see. Two blessings of ancients. Hmm. Getting those back in would be good. Yeah, I'm going to blow my tear. I get all my cards. And as long as I don't roll one. Okay, I recharge the tear. I'm done. So do you need me to go kill the Royal Naga? Do you have the combat power to do so? Yes. Please do. Yeah, she does. Yeah, please do. That'd be a good day. So I go over to the Royal Naga, and I encounter it. For each combat check, randomly choose a card. So I have a um, 1 through 3 flask thrower, 4 through 6 acid flask. So it's the acid flask. So I play the acid flask. It is going to be 1d10 plus 2d6. Um, plus 5. Good. Bad. What are we looking like here? Um, Math wise. Uh, my average roll is 17. Alright. Um, I am going to reveal um, my alchemist suit to add another 2d6. Because honestly, I'd rather just. Yeah. And suffer the examine. And that's only a reveal. I got for a nine. No. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 23. No, it's only the check to defeat. So the second attack is the one that matters for no, plus isn't. three. It's that isn't the way it works. Oh. So because of my when I would banish a card that I see a comical trait for a power, you may discard it again instead and draw a card. So I did that. So now I am on my second check. Uh, do I have... Okay, so the only thing in my can now is the flask thrower that has the attack trait slash is a weapon. Um, so it's d10 plus d6. Um, and at this point it doesn't freaking matter. So... Um, I'm going to reveal my scarab buckler to add 2d6. This is again... 
this plus five. Ooh. Oh yeah. So that's a lot. Yeah, seventeen, twenty, whatever. Okay, so you examine. It's dead. You have a trigger. Okay. When you examine this card, succeed at a stealth seven check or encounter it. The difficulty to defeat is increased by three. Stealth seven check or encounter it. Okay. Before you act, if you have any cards that have the attack trait in your hand, you are dealt 1d4 poison. Okay, so if I evade, then that doesn't happen, but this is the henchman. Yes, so we're going to have to defeat this. Or encounter it, and the difficulty to defeat is decreased by 3. You're dealt 1d4 poison damage. That's fine, I think. Yes, okay. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, Can you put the card on the green screen? Yeah. yeah so. Um, so I do not have any stealth, and I'm fine with encountering yeah. it at 22, so I'm himself. just going to suck it up. Now, uh, what's the closing? Can you do the close if you succeed? Oh, shit, that's Let's a Succeed problem. at a wisdom or divine check with a difficulty of 9. I have a d6, so I can't close it. You might want to evade them then. Yeah. Okay, so what's Because if we the... can't close them... Uh, you have to recharge a weapon, armor, or ally to gain dex, stealth, plus two. So your dex should be pretty big. Yeah, I will, um, recharge my scarab buckler then, which is an armor, to gain the skill stealth dexterity plus two. So that's d10, and then that's plus five. You gotta be to what to evade? Nine. Seven. Or seven? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. I evade him. So and he that gets means shuffled I don't in. take the damage either from the poison. Because you're not encountering. Yeah. Alright. Alright. There. I killed your thing. Thank Bush. you. There'll be another one in there. Yeah. Blessing of the of the mask. Right. Blessing of Anubis. Divine eight Carissa. Charisma or Diplomacy 11. Hmm, I'd have that. <laughs> well, I don't have Divine. My Charisma is a D6. Hmm. You don't have Diplomacy, I presume? Nope. Even if I reveal my doohickey, I still can't get it. So. Bye-bye. Just for prosperity. Did you roll Max? No. Oh. I did not. I mean, what's what's in my what's in my location? I'm like one trap so far. No bad uh, guys. One monster, three barriers, a weapon, a spell, an armor, and two blessings. Damn. All right. So you know what? I got. I got to get through this. Bit. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna discard my ally to explore my location. Okay. I had a D12 against Bane, so I invoke cold, or have the method or sphinx trait. Okay. You get an icy long spear. Boom. Yeah. Possibility. Uh, and get rid of it. Possibility of a max roll. Come on, let's do it. No. No, that was a five, wasn't it? Yes. Damn it. That's discarded. And now I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Okay. I have a blessing of the key. Um, Do I want to try this brain news or, or go try to close the glass pavilion? Uh, we need you to close. Well, I need to close here, too. Um, but we already started on that one. Uh, brain ooze is immune to mental and poison traits. All damage dealt by the brain ooze is electric. Before you act, draw a monster from the box. The brain ooze's difficulty is increased by that monster's adventure deck number. Mm, so it could be up to four. Uh, so he's a 12. If undefeated, discard a spell. So he's a pretty basic monster. I'll just leave him there. And I will relocate here, because can't you do something to support me by being here? Yes. Hey, she can do uh, I the can first recharge. or second combat check. Uh, also, there's... I can recharge a card to support him as part of the as part of my character abilities. Got that here. Blessing of Isis. I'm doing Divine on that sucker. Which means I don't think I can fail. No. Good thing. Okay. And discard this to explore your location. There you go. Thank you. Oh. And it's him. I did not examine, so he doesn't get the plus three. 
Before you act, if you have any cards that have the attack trait in your hand, I do, you are dealt 1d4 poison, which is a bad day. Yes. Because I also get a Curse of Dave A. Correct. Oh, Why now you roll max? <laughs> Damn. Where's those re-rolls from Kingdom Death? <laughs> so, Curse of Daybane. As a refresher. While displayed, at the start of your turn, if the top card of the Blessings deck has the basic trait, you may explore this turn only if you play a card or use a power that allows you to do so. Pretty shite. Yeah, so I have to lose four cards. Randomly, right? Or you choose. You, choose. you get to choose. Yeah. And I need to do one one attack of combat 19. I can give you a d4 plus 4 on the combat check. Okay, Keep so in mind. I'm going to lose my Cure, my Elemental Mastery, my Blessing of Wadget, and my Disable Mechanism. Okay. That leaves me with a Flame Staff and a Blessing of Raw. So, the uh, Flame Staff... Oh, wait. No, that won't work. I will get rid of the Flame Staff because I had to discard a spell to activate it. Mm -hmm. And keep Elemental Mastery. Okay, so um, I will start with the D6. Okay. Then, for my base attack, then I will do Blessing of Ra to add a D6 and... Uh, fire. Then I will use Elemental Mastery to add a D10 because it has fire. Um, I don't have the attack keyword, so I don't get my bonus shit again. Damn it! How are you feeling? You good? You bad? What? I could possibly use help because I don't have any pluses on this. I have two D6 and a D10 to beat a 19, so a max of 22 right now. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna recharge. A knife to add 1d4 plus its adventure deck number. Ooh, its adventure deck number. Which is four. No. The weapon's oh. adventure deck number. So I've been doing that wrong. All right. So it's a d4 plus three. Okay, d4 plus three. So that gives me now a max of 20, uh, 29 versus a 19. So I'm just below 50%. I will recharge my Deliquescent Gloves to give you 2d4. Oh, nice. I may recharge a card that has the Alchemical Trait to add 2d4 and the Acid or Poison tra Trait. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, because you're at my location. Okay, here I go. Ah, not a bad roll. Um, so I've got 5, 10, plus 11, so 21. Nice, I got it. And I didn't break it by three. Nice. So I don't examine right away. So you can now close the last pavilion. Uh, yeah. Bef uh, da, 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 da. Yep, if defeated, may attempt to close this location. First, let me see if I keep my blessing or my uh, elemental mastery. I do. And now I may attempt to close without any cards. Uh, succeed at a Wisdom Divine 9. Okay, Divine it is. So I have a D10 plus 6, and I so I just need to roll a 3 or higher. 5, I close. First location done. So what did we miss? We didn't get a Bone Crushing Hunter, a Baited Jewel Box, a Blessing of Horus, or a elemental tree. That's it for me. Drop my six cards. And what's my ability on that? Um, you may discard a spell to banish a card with the curse trait next to a deck of a character at your location. Um, bye bye, pillar of life. Okay. <clears throat> to get rid of the curse of Daybane.
<laughs> order there doesn't matter, right? What? Order doesn't matter, right? What do you mean? Can you do that at, during yeah, that I can do that any time. Okay. Uh, I will encounter the shield cloak, intelligence, knowledge, uh, eight. Um... That actually is enough to get it. <laughs> wow. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Can you keep going? Probably not. Uh, oh. I'd have to bury my yeah. Blessing of Isis to do it. It's a bury? Yeah. It's divine. Cause oh, yeah. The location. Uh, I don't know, but we're gonna. that's going to be a hard deck to eat through. Hmm. And you did just acquire the Isis. No, I didn't. Oh, I thought you did. No. She just acquired the blade. Mm. Yeah, if I was just doing that, then yes, I'd... I'd hold off. Yeah. All well, right. Yeah, we got, we got plenty of blessings left. With Six blade. turns each. Mm -hmm. Do not examine the difficulty of your feet is increased by twice the scenario's deck number. Eight. Ouch. If you did not examine? No. If you did examine? No. Oh. I just reduced the top part. Oh, yeah. I'm going on the next section. The difficulty so, feat is increased by twice so the scenario. Int yeah. arcane knowledge of 14 or wisdom of 16? Right. Trap. Alright, it is a trap. What is my int? Six. So, intelligence it is. Which gives me a 8 plus 1. Since it's a trap, I get another D8 plus 3. So 2D8 plus 4 versus a 14. Are you good or do you want a... Well, that happens. If undefeated, each character at this location is dealt 1D4 cold damage and moves to another random location, which gets superseded by the electricity damage of the location. No, I'm fine. Okay. I'll take no damage, but I'll just get shuffled someplace right Okay. That's 11 plus whatever, plus 4, 15. You got it. You need a 14. And I do intelligence. Yeah, you need a 14, so you got it. And that goes away permanently, I think. Yes. Would you like to keep going, sir? Uh, no, but I will reset my hand here. If proficient with light armors, you may recharge this card when you reset your hand. Okay. There's my I get a blessing of phrasma. No, the question is, where the hell do I go? Uh, what's wrong with the crypt? Um, the difficulty of checks against banes that have the cold or undead is increased by three plus. Oh, so increased by seven. And I have to do wisdom or divine of eight to close. Yeah, I think I'm going to crypt. Okay, Death Hound. Oh. Not on dead or cold. Yeah. So, Combat 7, then Combat 7. Okay, I will use my Whip of Centipedes. <laughs> so that's a D10 plus 3D6. And the result applies to both combat checks. Oh, nice. Oh, plus 6. Dead. And you exceeded by three, right? Yes. So I will examine the next one. And this is permanently gone. Let's see if I keep my whip of centipedes. I do not. That is a creepy sounding card. As you read. Yep. Explore step. Really? I will discard a blessing of the ancients to encounter an explorer staff. Which I don't think I can fail on. Well, no, I can. I get it. Yeah, and I'm just discarding it. Um, when you discard, can you explore again? No, it's Damn. not one of those. I know it's what like the it, shit. It was kind of <laughs> promising, and then it just 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 like denied. Hmm. Um. I can move that brain news to the bottom of its deck. Why? 
you're not planning on going back there, right? Well, somebody will eventually. You could yeah, save but, a round. Yeah, why? It's an easy, it's easy combat for me or a Colt. We don't, okay. have, we don't have spells. Okay, that's it for me. Damn it! Didn't get my cures. Why it? Intelligence, knowledge, seven. So that's going to be what I'm going to go for. I'm going to regret getting rid of that pillar of healing. <laughs> I got it. Sweet. It's not a bad one to keep around, though, to tell you the truth. Yeah. An extra D4 for a boon. Yeah. To try to get some of these smaller ones that we keep missing on. But we do have the little issue that, like, I mean, so I I have too many cards in my hand, so I'm gonna bury something. Oh, yeah, whatever. well, but I'm like, no, no, he's talking no, long term. Long term yeah. to keep. He's yeah. uh, like keeping your deck at the end of the round. I will bury the blessing of Isis because of the thing to explore my location. Chain lightning. That's a nice tax spell. Yeah, but uh, I guess oh, if I reveal this, I'll have to bury it. Shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what you got beat for it? Ten. Ten. Well, I, yeah, and I roll a d10 plus one. Yeah, so I got oh, well. a 20% chance. Not a big deal. If you, you don't it. get it, you don't Think get big. it. Happy thoughts. Oh, one off. One off. That's not happy thoughts. It is happy thoughts. It's just not happy thoughts that got me a spell. Okay. And that is the end of my turn. Alright, quicksand. Obstacle barriers. trap fleet. Dex acrobatics wisdom nine. If under film. Yeah, can't you fear a gumbo. You have the blessing of the bra. Alright, so I have to examine. Okay. Because I whooped it. This one? Yeah. And it is gone for It me. is Rathos. This is a henchman. When you examine this card, succeed at a stealthy. Yep, you gotta go it. Ouch. Don't matter. Why would I want to evade him? I want to encounter him. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. It says succeed at a stealth check, eight or encounter it. Yeah. I encounter it. Cool. Difficulty to increase is increased by three. Alright. Okay, I'm going to recharge my Blessing of Wrath to give you an extra die and fire to the tip check. Yeah, I'm going to figure out my shit first here. I'm going to reveal the shop room for D8. Give me a D12. Are you one dead? Oh, why can't you be one dead? <laughs> My fate blade, which is on your combat check, if you played another weapon, discard this card to add another d4 plus one. What are you giving me? I'm giving you just uh, one die. One die. And fire trait. Which would be dex. No, you're going to have to discard your hand after you beat him, so you might as well give yourself. Which is why I'm just, you know, I'm going for broke. Yeah. Don't use me. Another d12. I think you're going to beat him by three. <laughs> it's not going to matter. Yeah, I know. Yeah, all right, recharge this to add. Oh, that's a recharge. We can go back in. That's a recharge for another D4. And just in case, I can reroll one die. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's plus one, plus two, plus four. Plus four total. I think you got this. Oh, yeah. Alright, so. He is defeated. So, so when now, does it prop? What? When does it prop? You immediately attempt to close now. Okay. So, when closing, some, uh, wrong. Uh, okay. discard your hand. Boop. Uh, roll a d4. D4. Four. Draw, uh, three random cards from your discard pile. Draw, so they go into your hand. Big money. Yeah, no shit. Get my weapon's back. <laughs> that is not good. That's like crap money. <laughs> well, but you did close the location. 
So we've What's got, the uh, after closing? That was what he did. When permanently closed? Okay. That was the heal thing. All right. And only one card left. An enemy with 213 combat checks. Giggity. You done? Yeah, I closed the location. Blessing of Phrasma. Oh, a silk cloak. Con Fort 4. I get it. Yay. Okay. Oh. We now have that stupid thing with the diplomacy checks. I'm going to... I'm going to use Pard to examine the top card of Nicole's deck. General the Gift. Um, Spell level 4. It is not a non-villain, non-henchman monster. So, can't do anything else with that. Um, I'm going to recharge my armor when I reset my hand. And discard this. Alright. Fuck! Oh boy, that's... that's uh, <laughs> No cures, huh? No! That's a bad day. Can you acquire that spell? It's a level four, so it's, it'll be good for a trade, if nothing else. Intelligence, arcane, wisdom, divine. Uh, that's not really my thing. You could here. leave the location, yeah. and I could get it my turn. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys want to flip-flop, or you want to go for the brain news. Gonna go for the brain news. I think me and Demental and Poison, that's fine. Oh. Before you act. Oh, basic! Yay! I can recharge Blessings of the Ancients. <laughs> Alright, so I encounter the Brain Ooze. Before you act, draw a monster from the box. When Brain Ooze's difficulty defeat is increased by that monster's adventure deck number. Oh, that's not too bad. Draw low. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's only idea. a 12 base. 3, so 15. Okay. If she defeats it, it's gone. Last door. Uh, I'm recharging a Blessing of the Ancients for you. Okay. So that's 2d10. Uh, plus 5. That is uh, 17. And his difficulty is 15. Oh, wow. Nice. Just, just right. Nice. Okay. Well. So that recharge, huh? And it's permanently gone. Yeah, it's permanently gone. All right. Um. So that happened. I think we need to start continuing. We're getting low. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now that it's not going to cost you a. a yeah. Parody. Yeah. I will. Um. Discard my Blessing of Logit to examine the top light row. Henchman! Henchman. Alright, when you examine this card, succeed at a stealth 8 check or encounter it, the difficulty defeat is increased by 3, so that's going to be a 24. Before you act, you are dealt 1d4 poison. Okay. That kind of sucks, but... Oh, yeah. Uh, 1d4 poison damage, 2. Curse of David. Dude, slow down! Yeah, let her work, oh. do her hand first. Oh, man. right, if you can ignore the damage, then you don't get it. Exactly. Okay, I can discard this card to reduce acid, cold, combat, electricity, or poison damage dealt to you by three, and then I may search my deck for a card that has the alchemical trait and draw it. Oh, that's nice. Jump in the gun. See, I'm so used to not being able to handle poison. Me and Poison do not go well together. Okay. Alright. So you need 24 on him. Yes. I will recharge a Blessing of the Ancients to give you an extra die. Okay. Because I so need to get to my cure. Plus uh, So that's a d10 plus a d6. 
And then you give me a die, so that's a d10. And then this does not have anything. You may recharge a card that has the alchemical trait to add 1d4 in the acid or poison trait. 1d4. And acid, because I'm not going to do poison. Well, I could do poison. Doesn't really matter. All right, and then you may reveal a card to add 1d6 to your check. This plus I five. Need this plus five. So you need a total of are you 19. So I have 2d10, so that's 11. 11, 13.5, 13.5 plus 20.5 plus 5. So 25.5 is my 50%. And she and needs I need 24. 24. Right, I'm actually going to use the second part of Blessing of the Elements. Ooh, Recharge ooh. this card to add one die to any check that invokes the acid, cold, electricity, fire, or poison trait. Hmm. And I'm assuming you got a poison or acid in there somewhere, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All good. Did you give her two dice? No, just oh. one. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. 16, 19, 23, 26... 31, 36. Nice. You beat him. Yes, I beat him. So I can immediately attempt to close the location. So okay. Gonna... Summon and acquire an armor. Uh, that's going to be a bit of a pain. Yeah, that, that could be problematic. Based on the armor, let's hope for a B or C. <laughs> well, yeah, and if it if it has the alchemical trait, I can uh, recharge the Mumia Smuggler. Oh, nice. Do better on it. Very nice. He also got the Blessing of Ma'at and the Blessing of Wajid if we absolutely have to. Yeah. And we'll see what we're getting first before we... Uh... Oh, can you... Yeah, you can play the Blessing of Wajid on her to add two dice. Yep. Read Snake Armor. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that's a bad one. It is a difficulty of t constitution fortitude of 10. My constitution is a d8. Yeah, I think we need the yep. watch it. Yep. So discard how does this it card, work? Discard this card to add 2d8 to any check to acquire a bow. Okay. Okay, and mine's an after effect. Yeah. You got it. Yep, it's all good. Oh. Uh, so, what did we miss? And I can recharge this card since I'm proficient with like A armor. spell dagger. Kind of shitty. Vented plate mail. Uh, Tussle silk cloak. Scarab swarm. Eternal captives. And a stone weasel. Okay. So, nothing big. Alright. Oh, Blessing of Mott. D8 plus 2. Thank you for the help, by the way. Yep, alright, so I am going to discard the Black Kiss to explore my location. Blessing of the Mask on the face, Wisdom, Perception, or Divine. And I cannot continue. You cannot. Nope. Okay. Is there any start condition here? I forgot. Uh, no. Okay. I am relocating to the channel of the gift. Uh, so divine 12. So I have a D10 plus 6. That would be a 3, so I have a 9. I recharge MAGA 3 fingers to add 3. Okay. And that clears it. And... Ooh. 
Discard this card to allow a character at your location to search his deck for a spell and draw it. Cure! <laughs> um, after playing this card, if you do not have yada yada yada, try to recharge it, so I need an 8 on a d10. That's a nice card. That is not an 8 on a d10, so that gets discarded. Now I will play my cure for five cards. Hope I get good ones, like my other cure. And I'm done. Uh, actually, I could explore it again. And I don't have uh, the only one I'd have to bury is Blessing of Mott. And it's just bury, so. Oh, wow. I got five awesome cards back. Sweet. Okay, these get shuffled in. I have to see if I keep the cure. Thank. Oh, fuck me. Sad trombone. Mm -hmm. Okay, think I should explore again. I do have combat. Uh, and I have Blessing of Mott. Yeah, because you're going to have to bury the... He has to bury a blessing. I cannot. I can't close that location right now. Yeah, neither can I. Okay. I will explore. I'm uh, discarding the Sun Falcon Pectoral. Oh, recharge. Yes. Even better. A Black Marsh Spider Venom. Intelligence Craft 8. Oh. I think it fail it sucks if you fail that check or something. Oh, wait, no. Nope. No, that's okay. if you use it. Yeah. I miss it by one. And I'm done. Okay. You're not coming here with me? Yeah. Give a blessing. Yeah, blessing of Osiris. Blast Glyph. Ooh. I did not examine the card, so I need an Intelligence Arcane Knowledge 10 or a Wisdom of 12. If undefeated, each character at this location is dealt 1d4 cold damage. Okay, so. Uh, da, 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 da. I it, do not... Does it have the cold or undead trait? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, it does have cold, but is that's monster, isn't it? Or is it just bane? It banes. Oh, so... It increased has... by 3. Wait, isn't it plus the... Oh, uh, plus the scenario deck number. So increased by 7. Yes. So it's 17. Yep. Wow. That sucks. Yep. That's Don't fuck okay. up. We're all going to take damage. Oh, you do. You. <laughs> Which is still bad. Okay, so I do have to do the Intelligence Arcane Knowledge, so that starts me with a D10. Plus one. And then I can reveal a card to add one D6 to my check that invokes the Acid or Poison trait, or to my check to defeat the, a barrier. If it has the alchemical trait, then I may add another d6, so I will reveal my Noxious Bomb. So that gives me a... That gives me a d10 plus 2d6 plus 1 for a 17. And I get a cap. But I don't think I'm getting any better, so... Go big. That's 14. How short are you? Uh, I am short by uh, three. Okay, blessing of Mott buried. Okay. Because I played a card that is a divine. <laughs> All right. Well, then it is defeated. Mm -hmm. and, uh... Can we continue? Um. What's the closing on this? Uh, succeeded a Wisdom or Divine check. Ugh. Of eight. Ugh. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. That's a bad day. Alright. I got a D6 on a Wisdom. What about you? Uh, I got a D6. Alright, so we're both sucking it up. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I'm the one to close both locations right now. Alright, I will discard my Mumia Smuggler to explore. Again, it is a Shock Elemental. 
immune to electricity, mental, and poisoning. I don't think he gets the plus seven. I don't think so either. So that is the flask thrower. That has bludgeoning, so it's not increased by two. So that's a d10 plus d6 plus five. Need more? I don't think I need more. Okay. I will. No, she only has to be the nine. <laughs> that thing's so dead. Yeah, it's... The shock elemental is just so dead. It's and it's so permanently dead. dead. So it ain't you trigger the examiner. Right? Yeah, I do. And it's a trigger. Henchman. It's one of the henchmen. Well, you don't really want to encounter it. So it goes up to 22. Right. If we... So the thing is, if I kill the henchman, we will have to clear the deck. There's two cards left. Unless somebody can get me... Like, do you... We think I can that, give you... An extra die. So you'll have 2d6 to close with an, uh, versus an 8. It's worth it. I can reroll. So, okay. So, I say it's worth it. Oh, 21. yeah. And she has a die reroll. Yeah. So. Oh, wait. I Oh, shit. I have the noxious bomb, so I have to take poison damage. Okay. Um, so, if you have any cards that have the attack trait in your hand, you are dealt 1d4 poison damage. Oh! Four. Okay. I am going to recharge this card to reduce all damage dealt to me by three. So you take one. Take one, which means... Oh, but it was reduced by at least one, so I do not take the other stuff. Alright, I have to discard my bird feather tokens, because otherwise I'm not defeating this charge. So, I use my flask thrower, uh, which is a d10 plus six plus five and then oh, maybe I want to do that instead yeah, I'm going to use the noxious bomb for a d10 plus 2d6 uh, plus five and then I can draw a card because I am banishing, I am discarding this card as part of my power. Uh, that would have been nice. And then I, oh, uh, you may recharge or reveal a card to add one d six, and this now invokes the poison trait. So that's another two d six plus. Plus five. Okay. You good? <coughs> I'll give you a straight D4 plus one. Uh, Might not be bad. Would, that's you... not going to help on the next check, so sure. Oh, and it's a recharge? Nice. Twelve. Seventeen. Eighteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-seven. You got it. Plus or, five. Yeah, I got it. I think I screwed up on math, but in any case. So that's that. So now I can attempt to close the location. Yes. So I'm going to bury a Blessing of Ancients to give you an extra die, so you're at 2d6, right? Yes. And it succeed at a Wisdom or Divine check with a difficulty of 4 plus scenario number, so 8. So you have 2d6 to get an 8. Yeah. That bane would have gone up to seven, right? What? He didn't have cold or undead? No. Okay. No. Woohoo! Oh, wow. Double sixes. On closing, draw a blessing from the box. And we missed the third law, thank God. And in our noxious bomb. Woohoo! Alright. Let's go. And you have a blessing of the scroll. It oh, the villain. Oh, wow. Did not examine. Before you act, you are dealt 1d4 plus 1 poison damage. If Ouch. undefeated, you are dealt 1d4 poison damage. If right. defeated. So, ah. before I act, I am dealt 3, three poison damage. I will play my Mask of the Forgotten Pharaoh. Recharge this card to reduce the poison damage dealt to you by two. So I take one damage, but I don't get the curse. Yep, because you reduced. reduced. 
doesn't do fire damage at all, so I will discard my shield. Okay. Alright, now. Combat 23. Right now, all I got... Plus four. Okay, so I can either add a dis I can either add a die to your check, or I can hold a ma'at for um, a guaranteed plus three. Yeah. I think the die you get a twelve, right? I'll get a twelve. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. better. I discard my blessing of the ancients. Uh, Barry. Shoot. Oh wait, no, you're not there. Never mind. Yeah, you're right. So I get two d twelve, d eight plus four to get a twenty. Wait, I bury a blessing of Ra to give you another d twelve. And fire, if that helps. And... Ooh, all right. So that is 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 plus 4 is 23. Damn! Yeah. Barely. If defeated, you may recharge 1d4 random cards from your discard pile. So it does not matter. We won. Yeah. That instantly closes the location, right? Yes, it does. No. Oh, shit. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! Nice work. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. That, it was getting close at a certain point, but then it just kind of backed off. Yeah. Okay. Um. Rewards. This is scenario four? Sure. So, we get each character gains a card feat. Uh, increase a uh, card count for one of your card types. Yeah. Hmm. Anything else do we get? Um, loot. Ereu. We should see what that is. E R A Y U. It is an ally. Um. Recharge this card to add a d10 to your int check. Discard this card, and you may recharge any number of cards, then explore the location. During this exploration, add 1d8 to your int check. Hmm, not a bad ally. Yeah, that's interesting. Card feet, eh? Is anybody planning to take him with their card feet? If not, I might. I would not necessarily fight for him, but... Neither would I. All right, but... He adds two int checks, right? Yes. yes. What? My int is a d8, so I could use the help. What about yours, Nicole? D8 and... Mine's a d10. D10 plus one. Yes. Because I'm thinking, uh, Mir, you should take your... I think you should, because you need to recharge more frequently than I do. I really don't need the recharge. I just want it for the, the plus int. Yeah, one but... Time. But the nice thing is, recharge any number of cards, then explore your location, and during the exploration, add 1d8 to your end. Yeah, true. All right, I will. Increase ally? Or yeah. just figure it out, like yeah. you can... I'm going to increase item. I can't increase my item, so I might as well increase my allies. Oh, <laughs> here, you're probably going to take him, so I'll just pass that over. Looks like Sam Jackson down there a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right, so. That's right. going in the middle. If it's basic, it's just trash at this point. Yeah. Because we, we don't have enough gear for the uh, traders. Uh, we might. Oh yeah, we need threes or fours, don't we? Yeah. Otherwise we can't trade. Shit. Okay, so I've got... I can take one item. Do we have any? Okay. Flame stuff. Fuck. Right. Well, it allows you to turn other spells into... Combat. Combat spells if you want to, but you can't recharge them then. Yeah. So that is the downside. Um, my two allies, which is all I have. Three items. I'm missing blessings. Oh, right. Though, shit, I'm missing blessings. Um. Oh, yeah. Don't 
care about ISIS. And three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I gained a spell, a channel of the gift. So do how many uh, high level ones have we already discarded? Because I'm going to get rid of something that probably is. None. So I did get a hearth elemental. So if anybody else was planning on getting rid of something, it has to be, does it have to be three or four? Yes. Yeah, then technically we have two. Theoretically. Okay. I would not mind keeping the Hearth Elemental, but it is not critical for me. What is he? And then we have a Blessing of Isis, which is also another three. Oh, so we already have one if you want to keep that. Yeah. So we got one trade in, pretty much. I'm going to get rid of my Disable Mechanism, which is just a two. Okay. So all of these are going out of the deck, Out of right? play. Yeah. Anything below a three is going out of play. I really like this channel the gift because it allows me to get an attack card or a cure or something out of my deck. So yeah, if you want to keep that hearth element. Yeah, go ahead because there's no point in. Because I don't think there's anything that costs three boons to be a trigger, is there? No. Yeah. And what are you getting rid of as your ally? Um, actually, I haven't chosen my card oh, yet, so oh. I'm thinking about whether or not I want to bring the hearth elemental in just because of the recharge to draw a weapon or armor from your discard pile. Right, so we do have one trade. I said we all visit one location, Agreed. one trader to maximize our... I would like items if that's an option. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, pretty much, okay. I'm pretty much set on stuff, so... Okay, so do we have a trader for items? I don't know what our traders yeah, look like. we do. Look like traitors, bloody traitors. <laughs> items that have the magic trait, or just items. Um, one cost two, one might cost three. So let's yeah. take a look at that. Um, items that have the magic trait cost three. Just items cost two. And we're guaranteed a three or a four item if we just go with the item, right? Yeah. So I, I'd say we just do the items. Let's only trade them to two so she can keep her card she wants. Yeah, I'd agree overall. I'm just seeing if there's something else I could uh, jump that might mm -hmm. open it up. But I don't want to lose... But do you specifically want items with the magic trait? Or are you looking for something different? Magic trait would be better. But... I'm fine with getting anything other than the flame staff in general. Yeah. <laughs> so I said we go with just two to be up. safe because I don't want you to lose that. That's a high level card. It is a high level card. It's not like you know, oh my god, I totally want this, but it's. it's and you just easy. took an out, and you just took an ally slot, so yeah, might as well take well, it. Well, or I can back off on the ally slot if I want to. No, but it's a good one for you. Okay. So. How many items do we get? Four. four. That's number of us plus one. Okay, now do the items still have to be threes or fours? Yes. Okay. No. Already looking better. <laughs> that spell. What? Two back. In the pile is that spell. No. Oh. It's T. No, I just looked weird coloring. Only five cat, not of Isis. Okay, so we've got a not of Isis. When you examine this card, you may reveal a blessing that has the Isis trait. Nope. Oh, wait, that's acquire. Recharge this card to add one die to your int non combat check or your check that invokes the acid trait. That could be good for Nicole. Yes. So we, there's also the option, yeah, of buying a boon and then you taking one of the items that I have that, eh. like... Well, let's look at the other The bird feather too. tokens is what I'd take. Yeah, the bird feather tokens. Uh, so that's an option for you. Ring of Graf, Grasping Grave. Reveal this card dead. 1d4 plus the scenario deck number uh, to your check that invokes the undead trait. If the top card of the blessing deck is Phrasma, add, uh, add 1d4 plus twice the scenario. Don't want that. No, because I don't think any of us can trigger on dead traits, can we? Nope. Necklace of Fireballs. For your combat check, banish this card to roll 3d6 plus 12. Uh, you may succeed in an arcane 9 check to recharge instead. <laughs> don't like the banish. Also, you're not arcane, right? Yep. Yeah. Staff of Revelations. Reveal this card to recharge a spell to examine the top two cards of your location deck. If a card has the elemental or undead trait, you may encounter it. Otherwise, put the cards back in any order. 
At the start of your turn, reveal this card to examine the top card of your deck. You may return the examined card to the top or bottom. Not of Isis it is. Okay. And I will trade that to you for the Bird Feather Tokens. Okay. And bye-bye Flame Staff forever. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're good. That's it. Thank you very much for joining us. Yep. And we'll Thanks, be back uh, next week with uh, Gloomhaven and uh, more Kingdom Death and hopefully more Pathfinder. Later.